Hey there, I'm Rachel. I'm Tristan. We're the hosts of The Nooniverse on the Fandom Limb Network. Our podcast dives into everything related to the Asian entertainment scene. Whether it's K-pop, K-dramas, boys love, our universe covers it all. We post every other Tuesday morning to dish about what we're watching, who we love, and why you should too. You can listen to us on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you're interested in listening to real conversations about the Asian entertainment wave that doesn't get enough love, then you'll love the Nooniverse. Blade 1 was a hit. Blade 2 was even bigger. So it was inevitable that a third Blade movie was to be made. When German director Oliver Hirschbeagles talks about potentially directing this new movie fell through, the studio turned to David S. Goyer, the writer of the first two movies, who was already signed on to write the third. Ryan Reynolds and eventually Jessica Biel were brought onto the cast. Their characters were potentially going to get spun off into future franchises. Unhappy with the script and the direction of the series, Wesley Snipes was notoriously difficult on set. He refused to talk to the director and certain actors, and allegedly spent most of his time smoking weed in his trailer. Snipes also refused to shoot scenes at times, forcing Goyer to replace him with stand-ins and computer effects in order to complete the scene. Somehow the movie was completed and released to dismal reviews and a box office take that was equal to the first Blade movie, but less than Blade 2's gross. This became the last movie in the original Blade film franchise and holds the distinction amongst fans of being the worst of the three. But what did we think of this movie? Prepare your onslaught of unfunny dick jokes, eat a hearty bowl of Count Chocula cereal, and make sure all your outfits are adorned with the color red and tons of seatbelts because we watched the third and final movie in the Blade series of films. This is 2004's David S. Goyer classic, Blade Trinity. This is a show about franchises, vampire movie franchises. You're listening to License to Watch. Why in the world was this movie made? Ryan Reynolds Love Fest, that oh. is the License to Watch podcast. Oh, God. Ryan Reynolds so, is in this? Th- this movie is bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're coming out the hot out the gate with that I information. I think it's a consensus opinion. I, I was actually, my goal, about halfway through when I realized what I was dealing with here, my goal was to find things that I liked about this movie. I was yep. like, I'm going to have some stuff that I think is good, and... I don't know that I came up with anything. <laughs> the biggest sin is that it's not even really a full trash movie. It's just a forgettable, boring movie. <laughs> that is, that's always the worst thing. If it was like serious hot garbage, then maybe it would have some entertainment value. It's kind of just crap. I, I love the reverse bell curve where anything above 80, got to watch it. Anything below 20, fantastic. If it's yep. somewhere in the middle, no reason to watch. This is on the lower end of that bell curve, which is not quite... <laughs> yeah bottoming out enough is this a wrestler who is this guy that's is triple, triple h, h. Triple h. Yeah. i can't believe you don't know uh, what, you know you well, he's so youthful looking yeah. yeah what's funny is i've actually seen triple h in person i went to uh the carson daly show back in this is back in 2002 i went because wow. andrew wk was a musical guest we have heard of course the, we have heard about this carson daly show yeah <laughs> so many, this is such a like an important moment in your life it was <laughs> but triple h was like the non like musical performance guest on the episode. And I just, I was in like the front row. There was no row. You were just like in a standing pit basically. And uh, I just remember triple H was like fucking huge. He was like a giant person. Yeah. Like, Is he? Cause I imagine he's like Jax, but like four foot 11. No, he was yeah, like, I always I think he like something. Oh yeah. Yeah. He was like a, a, a superhuman, you know? So that's yeah, why yeah. when I see him in this movie next to like, what's her name? Parker, Parker Posey. Posey. He, How did, What's her name? He doesn't. Come on. <laughs> How dare you? Damn, that explosion actually looks good on this TV. Well, maybe that's yeah. my favorite thing that happened in this movie. <laughs> I love one that explosion. that guy. I love that that one guy got like shot out of a cannon somehow because yeah. of the explosion. <laughs> um, uh, so before we go any further, the movie that we're discussing today, this is, by the way, the last movie we'll be covering in the year 2021. Nice. Uh, our last Ooh. show, of course, is the Blade wrap-up with a bang, episode. A bang, the the Blade tragedy. 
the, I mean, the, <laughs> the, um, yeah, the, the Blade Trinity. This is the movie. Of course, it's the third uh, in the series and the final Blade also movie. Also the third in the series. Yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> wow. Harris coming out with the puns in this episode. Harris has notes and they're all that. <laughs> Blade Tragedy. It's the third yeah, movie. I've, I've gone through all my prepared material. <laughs> Oh, man, we better make it quick because there's a lot of shit happening. Uh, our guest for today's episode is a friend of the pod, a former roommate of Collins, and uh, a, a Hollywood, a bona fide Hollywood film editor, Don Fisco. Oh, hi there. Hi. Hey, thanks for doing this. Thank you for having me. Uh, sorry you had to watch this movie. <laughs> well, it finally got me to actually watch Blade 2, which I had never seen either. Oh, wow. So overall, good idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it seems like a net gain. Um we are we are watching the movie as we speak, and this is my my biggest question. Not for just for this movie, but for all the Blade movies. You're a vampire. You could theoretically live forever. There's you know you're kind of indestructible. You have superpowers. It's pretty cool. But like, if any silver or garlic gets anywhere near you, you are so freaking fragile. And yet these dudes, when they see Blade coming, like. My, my strategy would be get as far away as possible, hide, you know, pretend I'm not there, pretend I'm invisible, maybe you won't see me. Um, these guys go running at him like they're going to kick his ass. Like, they go chasing him, and this is a guy who's just covered in silver and garlic and, and sunlight and just lives to kill vampires. I would be like, like, I would, like, move to a different state. You know, like, I was like, I live in Blade City. Live out your vampire years in, like, <laughs> yeah. Topeka, Kansas. Yeah, or yeah. Like it's somewhere else. Blade it's will like never come low, to Kansas. Chill. <laughs> if I, and, and God knows, if I if Blade ever showed up in my neighborhood, I wouldn't be like, I'm going to kill that motherfucker. Get the day, Walker. I'd be like, I am the fuck out. <laughs> um, I imagine we're going to be rolling through this movie just talking, like, shit-talking it. So I'm going to try to pick out, like, the good things about this movie. The first one of which, I think, is Blade's car. Is it the same car that he's had throughout all the movies? I think, I think so. so yeah. It's a Dodge Charger, if I'm not mistaken. I believe so, yeah. It is a fucking, like, it's a muscle car. It's like, gives me a muscle, if you know what I'm with, saying. With, like, that matte black paint job. Yes, I love it. It's nice. Uh, okay, on to the shit talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, he looks like he has more tattoos. He's His look is different in this movie than it was in the first two. He's got like I think additional tattoos. He's got like sideburn tattoos, and yes. just it looks like they filled out his tribal ink a little bit more. But Way less seatbelts. He has less seatbelts, but they replaced the seatbelts with a big like logo on his chest that they never really explain. That I don't really get. And also, he's got a his trench coat has a red lining in it, which makes it look a little more like a cape. It's all in all a much goofier, more superhero-y version of his costume, and I am a a solid hard pass on all of it. Does anyone oh, yeah. know if he was executive producer on Blade 2? I doubt he was on 1, but he was on 3. So I feel like he had a lot more latitude to do whatever. Well, yeah. do you know the story behind this movie? That, yes, but we should talk about it. <laughs> yeah, so from what I have gleaned, it's that uh, Wesley Snipes was not on the set of this movie, only Blade. And like all the, you know, when Ryan Reynolds was asked what it was like to work with Wesley Snipes, he famously said, I don't know. I didn't meet Wesley Snipes. I only met Blade. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so like Wesley Snipes would not interact with people like the director and the other actors. He would have his assistant like speak for him and or stuff. Or write them notes. Yeah. Um, I also, they, I also heard that he spent a lot of time just hanging out in his trailer smoking weed. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Which sounds like he'd be fun, but then mm-hmm. it turns out yeah. that everyone hated him and he was a dick. Now, I don't know why he acted that way or well, if he didn't act that way in the other two movies. I also read an article that said he... His conflict with the director was that early on, the director did something that I could have been perceived in in multiple kind of ways. But Wesley definitely thought it was kind of racist, and he just kind of thought the director was like a little racist and didn't want to talk to him. But it wasn't real specific in this article. It was just that like there was some implication of that there at some point. And yeah. it's been a while since I read the article, so I can't reference. Well, the director for th- tri- uh, the third one was Dev- David S. Goyer, I believe, yeah. right? And he was the writer for the first two. Yeah. And this was his first time directing anyone for anything. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like he just did not enjoy the experience. He probably just made some kind of mistake that, like, you know, could be taken personally, even though who knows. It, what, what did he go on to direct? Not too much else. He uh, every other movie he directed, he directed like three or four other movies, and they're all of this caliber, like pretty bad. Yeah, he is not a very. This is maybe his best movie. 
which yeah. is shocking. <laughs> but he's he's notoriously like he's a writer of comic book movies, and he's credited like with a story credit for on the Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, The Dark Knight Rises, Batman vs Superman, Man of Steel, like all these Batman and the Superman. Crow City of Angels. The, oh, The Crow was before um, this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so a lot of shit like that. Um, That's a pretty good resume. The oh. new Hellraiser. Oh yeah, I saw that Wait, with like nobody in it. Like I'm still Terminator concerned. Dark Fate. Ugh. Yeah, he's Ooh. he's uh 2004 technology loading up the DV cam. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> this is probably the most 2004 movie I've ever seen. I agree <laughs> completely. Everything in it is so 2004. The way it's the way it's made and the way it comes across as as well as like everything we see in it, like all the tech and everything. Blade One starts with that fantastic rave scene with all the blood and everything, and Blade Two still has a little bit of that t- turn of the millennium kind of vibe. It's all gone by by the two thousand four. Yeah. Yeah. None of that charm that was in the original is still here. Yeah, and and you know, in a weird way, I thought that um, the first one especially seemed very grounded. Like it, it was sort of like a you know, it wasn't like a gritty, realistic Christopher Nolan, you know. Uh, superhero movie but it felt like it took place in the real world you know and it had those elements of like the rave culture and the you know like different i don't know it just felt very much like this could be a thing that exists um and this one like again he's got like the weird little flame things on his undershirt and it's just he's if you saw this guy (laughs) like he would always stick out no matter what era he's in but there was something about it this movie that just felt very much like, okay, we've gone to a different kind of cartoony, unrealistic world rather than something that takes place in our reality. But there's something you have to remember about this time is that the clothing that was popular amongst like the elite celebrities and things like that, if you remember a little company called Ed Hardy yeah. or, uh, or Von Dutch hats, do you remember those? Strong Ed Hardy vibes. From well, he's, wearing, in this. he's wearing he's wearing an Under Armour shirt, print. Yeah. Too, an Under Armour shirt the whole time, which like yeah. like in you know sports and stuff, Under Armour like took off like right around right. 2002 to 2007 or whatever. What did we think about the performances in this movie? I only say that because that scene with Wesley Snipes and um, uh, Chris Christopherson, I was like. These guys aren't necessarily the greatest actors in the world, <laughs> but like it was like bad dialogue delivered. But like if they hadn't been famous actors in a big budget movie, if this had been something that somebody was showing me like, oh, I did a short with my friends, I'd be like, wow, those performances are not great. <laughs> and this is like, because it's them, I sort of overlook it. But I'm also like at one point I was like, whoa, you know, like they're just sort of reading these lines. I don't even think they have these they're, I don't they don't even sound like they're off book, you know, like they're they're totally just most of them have cue cards held off camera. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, Parker Posey is uh, Parker Posey, great as she is in everything. <laughs> She's great. Well, you know, Harris, it's an interesting thing to talk about the performances because one uh, one thought I had about this movie is that it's very similar, like beat wise, and like if you were to write out the plot, like to the first movie, it's like okay, there's vampires, and ancient evil is like unearthed, and Blade is the good guy, and there's a bunch of bad guys. There's a girl vampire. There's an there's emo a... vampire that wants to resurrect this ancient evil. Yeah, yeah with, exactly. With science. Um, and then there's an epic fight at the end, and the bad guys lose, and he wins. And so it's like almost the same movie, but this is almost like the yin to the yang of of the first movie, which is like, I mean, not that the first movie is like a Or is it the game. yang to the yin? Yeah, you could be right there. Um, uh, not that the first movie is like a, a Citizen Kane by any means, but it is, a, I would call it a great movie in comparison to this. This is mm-hmm. like every wrong choice, including mm-hmm. the performances. Uh, okay, my least favorite performance and basically thing about this movie is Dracula. Though. Yes. Not right. the costume. Or the special that, effects. That looks amazing. That, that's pretty cool. I wish he was like that the entire time. This would be such a better movie if they resurrected some monster man. Yeah, who that was, was just frightening like, to look at. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Who was just a scary beast that just destroyed everything. But this guy, like the metrosexual like, <laughs> leather pants We're thing. talking, of course, about <laughs> yeah. Dominic Purcell, known only for Jailbreak, I think. It's yeah. literally the only thing he's done. and uh, Which was so hot at the time of this Yes. show coming out. And and I say oh, metrosexual movie. because that was the term at the time for like that kind of style. Oh, you're canceled. We don't count. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Am canceled. I canceled now? Damn it. He's yeah. canceled on um, every episode. Not again. <laughs> no, and, and this was like this, I think because that show was blowing up, they cast him. They were like, oh, rising star. He was probably affordable. They're like rising star. And, and he was probably thinking this will make my career being a bad guy in a superhero movie. And 
neither of those things worked out well. He was not a good casting choice, and his career went nowhere, and now I don't even know. If he must be working, I guess. But I don't even understand how he is an actor. Like, he doesn't express emotions at all. <laughs> it's, the, it's the Sam Worthington effect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> this, uh, this newspaper salesman with the eye patch is the DP of the film. <laughs> nice. <laughs> they gave him a cameo. I mean, I feel like he worked hard just because, like, there must be a lot of coverage for this many cuts, you know? Yes, there is an abundance of cuts. They they definitely, I don't know if it's the best editing, it's definitely the most editing. They yeah, get the award exactly. for most editing in a movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when, for when half we, the movie, I was convinced this was Anthony Bourdain, by the way. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. This guy who's interviewing um, another actor who's from Christopher Guest movies, who's also in this, which is funny. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> J- John Michael Higgins. Yeah, I thought that I was hoping that it, this would like become a theme when I saw him and Parker Posey already. I was like hoping we'd get more. Yeah, Christopher Fred Guest Willard. Like Fred, Fred <laughs> Willard pops up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm here to touch you. I mean, suck your blood. Uh, Eric Bogosian, by the way, is played is is the guy playing Bentley Tittle. Bentley Tittle. I can't believe this is the only time they use the character in the entire movie. They they get Eric Bogosian, they name his character Bentley Tittle, and they don't have him in the movie later. And he's like playing this Charlie Rose type interviewer. Oh right, this, this is the Anthony Bourdain guy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sorry. It's, there's so many names, you know. Um. Yeah. Bentley, you know, Bentley Tittle is the only name you need, need to remember. Mm-hmm. What's that guy that you guys like? Is it Bob Balaban or Bill? Bobbalan, <laughs> Baba Blah Blah. That's Bob-a-blah. another Christopher Guest Bob-a-blah. guy that should have been in this one. Yeah, I would have yeah. loved to see Bob Balaban vampire. He's increasingly in Wes Anderson movies these days. I think. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was in the well, he was dispatch. in French Connection. Yeah. Yeah. French Dispatch. <laughs> Not French Connection with Jennifer Coolidge as Whistler's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, vampires! <laughs> uh, French Dispatch was really good. I just saw it yesterday. I think Don saw it too. Oh, fantastic! Because I was sitting next to him. Not not as good as Blade Trilogy, though. Yeah. No, no, nothing is better than <laughs> Blade Trinity. Um, I like Blade Tragedy. That's really Blade good. Tragedy, Blade yeah. Tragedy. Uh, yeah, I saw French Dispatch too. I I also approve. Oh, look at you guys checking out Wes Anderson movies while I'm <laughs> sitting at home like a jerk watching. God watching, knows what. <laughs> watching Blade Trinity again and again. <laughs> yeah, and again, again. again. <laughs> uh, Colin had to tell me it was Parker Posey, and the entire movie I thought that meant Busy Phillips. I completely <laughs> confused the two. I was like, how is that Busy yeah. Phillips? Somehow I could understand that confusion, though. That, <laughs> that sort of They're both sense. legends of the early aughts. <laughs> yeah, like or early indie actresses. That did upset me, though. I'm, I'm a longtime Parker Posey fan. And in fact, when this movie came out, I was like, I was into Parker Posey's performance in this. And, and at that time, you know, as a youngster, my other male friends were, you know, very focused on how uh, Jessica Biel was the best part of this movie. Um, <laughs> because I, my, my favorite Jessica Biel is from Summer Catch. I don't know if anyone's seen mm-hmm. that movie. Of course. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Have you seen that? With, uh, no, Fred, I haven't. Freddie Prinze Jr. Is that the. Yes, uh, Freddie Prinze Jr. Yes. My and, favorite. And um, Matthew uh, Lillard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Matthew Lillard. The my favorite Jessica Biel is the Texas Chainsaw remake, which Ooh. could uh, alternate title for that film could be Jessica Biel's ass. <laughs> They're yeah. just like our close up on her ass for the whole movie. It's it's a wonderful film. I uh, I can't think of a favorite Jessica. Oh, I liked her in The Sinner, that the TV show with Bill Pullman. That's TV. Yeah, I'm just saying that <laughs> that's the one thing I liked her in. Um, OK. Oh, and Seventh Heaven, of course. Oh, um, yeah. I almost forgot. Yeah. Uh, this you, podcast wait, you, has deep connections to Seventh Heaven. Yeah, seven. we've mentioned uh, Seventh Heaven. Usually <laughs> talking about the dad and his yeah, various misdeeds. How much we hate him. Uh, and, and the mom is from Star Trek Four. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, long history with Seventh Heaven. Um, and here she is disguised in this urban city as a... Um, as like the homeless a, woman from Home Alone 2. Or, or <laughs> yeah, or so, like I'm thinking like some kind of like, you know, Hungarian uh, um, 1950s... Uh, Housewife on her way home from the baguette store, like it's like the most cartoonish. Yeah, I, I said, disguise. why, why, why does she have a baguette sticking out of a grocery bag like that? And we're not like in France. Like you, you never see that in a movie anymore, unless the character is in Paris. Yeah, like there's just so much. How did she know that these guys were gonna attack her? You know, they have intel. <laughs> yeah, they have a lot of intel. Yeah. They don't specify, but they're a network. They're a coordinated network mm-hmm. with, with sleeper intel. cells. 
I will say the cells. disintegrating uh, body effect looks a lot better in this movie. It does. It's looking pretty good. I just love the Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro version. Very CG, very video game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, see, why isn't this guy running the other direction? Right. It's like, this, this woman's clearly armed. She's got the drop on us. It would be just like, scatter, live to fight another day. So here's something that was unclear to me. She's about to kill someone with this, uh, like, light laser arc thing. Yeah. Um, can that kill, like, a regular human as well? Because it looks like they avoid ever touching the laser, but they do say the laser is like a UV thing. Yeah, but they also said it was like the... the hotter than the hotter sun. Hotter than the sun, <laughs> which yeah. I would imagine would slice through anybody. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Vampire or no. <laughs> like... <laughs> is this a like vampire specific weapon or is it like a dangerous just, weapon? Yeah. <laughs> it seems really hard to use if it's like that. Yeah. Like one wrong move. Doesn't she have it on her back? Right. Like if yeah, she, like if somebody accidentally <laughs> presses a button, she might cut herself in half. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they really, and they only use it like in short, like they'll they'll open it up, turn it on and just jab somebody with it and then put it right back away. Yeah. Like they're not, they're not whipping the thing around like it's a fucking sword. Yeah. Not a lightsaber. I feel like one of these people would be like, I'm using this as my only weapon, but... No. The yeah, his new costume looks so bad and the added like they do a lot of like red mm-hmm. on people's costumes yeah. in this movie and it just looks awful. It like makes no sense for the character. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you're right. It just makes it look more I don't know if comic booky is the right thing or like cartoony or I don't know if they wanted to like sell action figures or something. I'm sure. I, and they're like, Oh, we know. need more color. You can't just be wearing black and leather all the time. I'm Maybe not, it's a post uh matrix thing, you know, like guess, yeah. or a post um columbine you know like the black uh, trench coats yeah. and things like yeah, that we got to give him bright red lining in his trench coat so he's not confused with a school shooter yeah <laughs> we don't want to seem see, like that looks cooler we don't want to seem like our vampire murderer is endorsing school shootings yeah you don't um <laughs> I'm just, uh you know what i i mean I, I i hear what you guys are saying about this but my most egregious thing about the costume design of this movie it doesn't. It doesn't become clear until later. But there is just so much leather pants mm, in yeah. this film, and I, I'm not against leather pants. Don't don't get me don't don't get that twisted. You know, I'm not yeah. against leather pants. Anybody who owns as many pairs of leather pants as you do, can't be <laughs> zero. All, all of a sudden. <laughs> but like, I, I you know, is there a limit? I mean, come on, like. What are the odds of this many people deciding to wear leather pants at once? You and know, like, like and everyone unlikely. who. Everyone who I've ever known who did own leather pants did not wear them every single day. That's true. They, I mean, they get a little funky for one thing. Yeah, I would believe that. Um, all right, let's summarize the plot before we get any deeper. <laughs> oh, Jesus, is that me? Uh, I think so. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Somebody ready to time me? Yeah, I got you right here. Okay. Uh, this is not going to be good because I forgot again. And What's the time limit? You got a time limit normally? Two, two, minutes. two minutes. All right, let's see if you can do I, it. I love that the layer has so many computers in so many different places that are not networked together, and they're so far apart. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's a very dumb setup. Yeah. I also love how Whistler's telling him just before this, hey, you know, you can't kill humans because that'll draw too much attention to us. And the, the oh, cops yeah. show up, and he's and just he kills running 40, him down. Like a dozen <laughs> FBI members. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he's like, oh, fuck it. <laughs> Yeah, like technically these guys that he's killing are not bad people. Right. They're, they're, they're government workers. Yeah, yeah they were hired <laughs> yeah. by the They've FBI. got a pension. They've got families at home. Yep. They're inadvertently working for the vampires, though, which makes them fair game for Whistler. I guess so. Yeah, Whistler, <laughs> Whistler takes out quite a few himself. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, okay, you ready? ready? On your mark, get set, uh, go. Okay, we, so we start off in Syria or Iraq, and a group of vampires is going to unleash an ancient evil again. Um, and one of them gets killed, and then we cut to Blade, and he's blowing up some factories, and Whistler's like, you know, you gotta stop killing people because he accidentally killed a human, and it got caught on camera, and now the cops are after him. Um, and then he says, we're gonna need, you're gonna need to have friends, and then we see, we meet um, this lady that we don't know is Whistler's daughter, but it's Jessica Biel, and he's, she's Whistler's daughter, and she's setting up these vampires to kill him. And then there's a bunch of vampires... Um, or cops controlled by the vampires bust into Blade's house and they try to take Blade and um, Whistler blows the place up and blows himself up and they capture Blade and arrest him 
And then it turns out that the cops are actually being run by the vampires, and the vampires show up, and they're like, oh, we're going to fuck you up, and they sedate him, and they're going to kill him. But then all of a sudden, this guy busts into the room, and it's um, Ryan Reynolds, and he's making a bunch of stupid jokes, and um, he helps Blade escape. And then while they're escaping, Whistler's daughter shows up again, and the three of them escape. And then at the end, they're surrounded by cops again, sort of like how Blade was when he had to turn himself in. But this time a van pulls up and they just drive away. Um, and then so he meets this team of guys that are the van driver, who is this black guy who's got a tiny nothing part, Pat Oswalt, who also has a nothing part, and some blind lady that's Natasha Leone and also has a nothing part, and a little girl. And they're all part of this vampire killing club. Oh, I'm way behind. Um, so they, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm fucked. Um, so they decide that they, they're Drac- they somehow know that Dracula has been resurrected by this group, and they they need his blood to kill all the vampires in the world to create a virus. Um, but also the vampires want to use Dracula to kill Blade and also use his blood so they can all become daywalkers. So it's this big quest to, for Dracula and Blade to fight, and it takes forever and it goes back and forth, um, and eventually. Uh, Drac- Blade and Whistler's daughter go. Ah, fuck. Whistler's daughter go and kill this um, blood harvesting farm they have. But meanwhile, the vampires kidnap Ryan Reynolds and the little girl and kill all the rest of the vampire hunters. And there's this big showdown. And after a big fight, Blade kills Dracula, and they win. Yeah, with the virus. With the virus, which kills all the other which vampires. kills all the other vampires and ends the series, or so we thought, but it doesn't. And our main heroine dies in his arms as the sun comes up. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, an uneventful uh, synopsis, much like this, this yeah. movie. <laughs> uneventful. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, like it does. It it's not really a Blade movie. It's a Ryan Reynolds movie, but then it doesn't know that it's one or the other, and like that's a pretty big mistake to make. And then it makes some other mistakes, mm. and that's. Blade 1 and 2 takes its subject matter incredibly seriously, but knows it's a joke. And this one just tries to make a ton of jokes about a serious thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I kind of wonder how much it was like the casting of Ryan Reynolds. Did they, because he's not a comedian, you know, like he's a comic actor and that's his background, but it's not like he ever like did stand up or was in a writer's room, you know, like he's not a comedian and honestly. He was on a sitcom. Yeah, but he he, he didn't write it. What what sitcom was he on? Uh, one guy, two, two girls, and two a pizza girls, place. one cup, uh, or something. Yeah, two yeah. girls, one cup. <laughs> um, oh wait, two, guy, I two guys, that. a girl, and a pizza yeah. place. That's from yeah, like yeah. two thousand, right? and then later, not a pizza place, just the yeah. guys and the girl. Wow. Um, yeah. Wait. So, I because I remember him. The earliest thing I remember him from was a movie called Buying the Cow, mm. which was like a rom com where he was naked a lot. Which I, for some reason, like he is always at least shirtless in everything. If you got it, for some reason, you show it off. Yeah. I think it's in his contract that yeah. like, they don't, you don't hire Ryan Reynolds to not show off the goods. Which is hilarious that they put his um, vampire tattoo uh, in his pubes for this one. Mm-hmm. Which uh. is <laughs> they just wanted multiple shots. <laughs> Matt's of hurt that, by this. Yeah, down in that pube I, line I, area. I feel like the reason I hate Ryan Reynolds is probably because of this movie, and I had never <laughs> seen this movie until I watched it for <laughs> for this. He is so bad. Like all his jokes in this are like cringeworthy they're not funny like he he is an annoying character that i want to see die on screen that's like the <laughs> well here's I, the thing do you I think do you I, think they brought him in and they were like hey you're kind of a funny guy come up with some jokes for this and he and he was writing his own stuff or do you think they said hey we're casting ryan reynolds and he does comedy stuff so write some jokes in either way somebody who wasn't mm. funny wrote some jokes for this well, I, and they weren't funny I believe the same writer for all three movies. So it's my understanding. It has to be Ryan Reynolds choosing to improv those lines. I think it was the power vacuum created by the like conflict on the set where he was like, Oh, like no one's really in charge here because of this conflict. So I, I have the freedom to improv. No one's going to stop. Well, this was one of Wesley Snipes other complaints is that he felt like he wasn't consulted with casting Despite movie. being executive producer, yeah, and yeah. he was he was a producer on all three of them, so he's always had a pretty big. Was he was he exec producer or yeah. just a producer? Um, well, I think if he was a producer, he would he would have more more influence. It's only listed on here as a producer, but that would mean that he had more influence than an exec executive producer doesn't do shit. I mean, which is why I think the idea that he's an exec producer on this, which he was on this one, uh, he was probably an executive producer on all three of them, which is kind of just an honorary title usually you give to a star who is who c- you can't get the movie made without him. Um, so he doesn't really have that much power, but, but I think that they were probably listening to him a little more on the other ones. Cause it sounds like they cut him out of a lot of things here and he was like bitter about it. But that was one of his complaints was 
he didn't get consulted on casting as much as he wanted to. And the casting was fucking dumb, you know, like not just the Ryan Reynolds thing. Parker Posey, who is a fine actress, has she's one of those people that only functions. Shut up, Colin. I'll let you. Have, I'll let you. <laughs> you're wrong. Whatever you're saying. <laughs> but like, she's one of those. She's like a modern person. Like you can't cast Parker Posey in a period piece. You know, like you know, you couldn't cast her in like Elizabethan England. She can only be Par- Parker Posey sounding like Parker Posey. Like she doesn't. Ha- she's a good actress, but she lacks the range to play anything outside of sort of that character. And it just doesn't kind of work when she's like. You know, it works when she's she has moments where she's like it's almost like a meta commentary on the movie. That kind of works. But then whenever she's got to deliver something that's like menacing or, you know, spooky, it's kind of like, eh, she still just sounds like Parker. When she's like, talking about cuneifo- cuneiform, <laughs> I'm just like, eh. You're mm-hmm. wrong. She's no great. Bio. Man, the, you're wrong and she's great. These <laughs> these crossfades are atrocious. Oh, and yeah. they, they don't <laughs> exist in one and two. <laughs> but it's like, it's the same thing we've been saying. You, I, I can't see any one shot for more than... About 10 seconds. A minute is the absolute longest, but 30 seconds is closer to like the actual longest. You, you, you go from Guillermo del Toro directing the second movie, one of the, the strongest directors we have yeah. alive today, to yeah. a first time director who just wrote the scripts the it's previous like, movies. Why is this all slow motion? It's it's just so many weird decisions, but it's, you know, it's like very stylized. It's very like a lot of the action scenes are very music video kind so of. So music video. Fast punch-ins and, you know, all sorts. The movie's just like overly stylized and it doesn't work for that reason. I'll say one thing about Parker Posey. She looks uh, like a good vampire. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, like if you can't hear the line delivery, this this all seems like she's like a little Feruza Balkish in this. Yes, very much so. How dare you, Harris? <laughs> Triple H. She's got, I'm wearing my Days like. and Confused shirt today. <laughs> yeah, she's in that. Did you know that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's like yes. <laughs> yeah. Also, like you know, uh, uh, it's weird to have. I don't know. Again, the Ryan Reynolds casting thing is kind of a mistake. Jessica Biel was actually fine in this, I guess, for a nothing part. Um, but like, yeah. there's no other memorable performers. In this. You- Natasha Leone was pretty good with her two lines or whatever uh, she definitely i never saw her eyes focus on anything and she's playing a blind person which that's pretty much that's, that's well <laughs> done isn't she wearing sunglasses most of the time she is, she <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah it's because she kept on looking at stuff they're like i'm sorry we got to put sunglasses on her yeah this and the, this is like the uh, the Patton oswald is like the least utilized i've ever seen Patton oswald in anything i think mm-hmm. i've seen Patton oswald in uh reno 911 and they like and you know, he only gets to be like a small part in a sketch and they're still utilizing him better than. Mm-hmm. Wait, you know what I love about this? Uh, what's Ryan Reynolds character's name? Something King. Hannibal King. Hannibal King, right? But like. We jump through the window and she yells. The, you, like <laughs> all, the, King. all the bad guys refer to him as King. They're like, yeah. what are you thinking now, King? Like it yeah. just reminds it like, you know how like today yeah. <laughs> people say that? Like when like when you're honoring someone, you're like, yep. uh, you know, go on King or like whatever. <laughs> like yeah. That's just what I was thinking of. Every time they spoke to him in this movie, constantly calling him king. They're but just I, I like how him. when he's he first makes Is that a boner. <laughs> yeah. Boner's cracking. Boner's cracking. <laughs> There's a scene where Wesley Snipes is released from uh, his his bonds, and he stands up and bends backwards, and it looks like he has a boner. <laughs> yeah. Um, did, did he like did they try to cut it and he like fought for the boner no, leave it <laughs> he's, in. Like, he's like, like leaving his post-it notes like Blade's boner stays on a post-it <laughs> Blade's always got a boner <laughs> I just hide it well <laughs> I tuck it into my belt my many belts <laughs> <laughs> many, many. Belts. That's why I need several belts. <laughs> My bone is strong. What's <laughs> Lee's nice impression? It's, it's, it's not uh, good. It's not good. <laughs> it's it's close, but it's not there. <laughs> yeah. I you know I I feel like he got a few motherfuckers in here, but I I could have seen I could have seen him say motherfucker at least one more time. Yeah, there yeah his lines aren't as iconic. There is no, um, they not, nothing about ice skating <laughs> uphill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, you know, they, they were trying to give him like sassy lines and it really wasn't working. They were probably like, try this line. He was like, no, fuck you. So much of the movie is this, just cutting back and forth between two people getting into very similar karate fights. For like all the weapons they have, everything ends up being karate fights. I'm also confused why the lights would be flashing in a scenario like this. Yes. Oh, yeah, and I hate it. Again, it's... It happens yeah. multiple times throughout the movie where they get into a fight and the lights just are turned on and off. There's yep. a PA off, off camera just <laughs> flipping the switch. Yep. Yeah. Again, it's very much style over any sort of common sense. 
And here's a great scene where there, there's two people at either end of the hallway pointing guns at them. So they just duck out of the way, and the two people shoot each other and continue shooting. Um, yeah, bizarre. Um, uh, also, this movie just makes a meal out of everything. Like it's every like preparing for battle scene where they're like gearing up. There's multiple scenes of people getting dressed, and they last forever. You know, what about the archery practice? Yeah, exactly. It's like insane how many times they're like, let's just have a a two minute break. Where we're gonna have a scene where some where there's no dialogue and just stuff happens. <laughs> Triple H's running. Triple H away. realizes there's silver in the bullets. It's like oh, runs away. <laughs> yeah. See, but once again, smart. That I get. <laughs> it looks so funny because he's like, you know, he's cast with a bunch of people who are smaller than him because he's gigantic, and he's the one who gets to run away first because he's like a character. <laughs> Well, he's got to live till the end. Yeah, exactly. Even though he gets shot in, in the eye later with an arrow that somehow all their arrows kill everyone else, but he gets shot in the eye and it doesn't kill him. Yeah, um, why Why would she have some silver arrows and some non-silver arrows? And yeah. I don't, that doesn't make sense. Bizarre. Um, Ryan Reynolds, can we talk about Ryan Reynolds' beard in this for a second? Um, I guess. Because I don't know that we've... What are you talking about, Jessica Biel? No. <laughs> I don't know that we've seen her <laughs> facial, facial <laughs> no, hair before. Bad. You think that's how his beard actually grows? All like jet black and in weird shapes? Uh, I would believe it. He's Canadian. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that explains a lot. That explains it's it all. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Don's a beard expert, I would say. Uh, uh, among in us. In this room, yeah. yeah. Certainly. They, they painted it on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Completely. <laughs> It's it's paint. Yeah, it's all in post. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Jessica, or you mean it's like house paint? Yeah, they house paint. On. <laughs> yeah. Jessica Biel is so like young in this movie and cute that she gives off like little sister energy to me. Like mm-hmm. Ryan Reynolds is just like, like Come Bioshock on. little sister. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's why I, I was I was unclear if they're supposed to have a thing going. Right. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's all like business. Will they or won't they? Because they're really it's a very platonic relationship for two hot people that are working together, um, and th- it just never goes there. Uh, well, I, Ryan Reynolds has all that baggage from his whole, like, sex slave relationship with Parker Posey that they hit Oh, yeah, a lot. I see. I oh. guess that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> a, Triple H a, has a, a sped up shot. Yeah. Over, <laughs> undercranked, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 He has oh, the yeah. funniest physicality in this movie. And then there's teeth. Oh, God. Yeah, this... when we were watching it, Don was like, so why does he have metal teeth? Did, did something happen that I didn't see? And I yeah, was we... like, no, it's a style thing. It's, it's like, just it's like, like having your own yeah, grill. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, this was 2004, yeah. so it makes yeah. sense. Yep, yeah, 2004. 2004. Or, or the... are we to think that maybe the, the teeth were broken and didn't grow back properly, and he's embarrassed? He had to, he had to go to a vampire uh, dentist. <laughs> oh, my God. An orthodontist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe there's like a backstory where Blade knocked his teeth out in some previous encounter. Oh, and, that'd and be the great. The just got cut. He was like, Blade, I hate that guy because he's the guy who knocked my original teeth out and then I had to get these metal ones. And they were like, oh my God, that's too many We got to cut for something tri- for time. That's too many lines for Triple H. Yeah. We got to talk about dicks more. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds, get in there. <laughs> yeah. Ryan Reynolds, go say something about dicks. <laughs> this movie is only allowed to be two hours and like five minutes long. Well, <laughs> Any longer than that is too long. <laughs> well, I know in the lore of vampires from what we do in the shadows, if they lose their teeth, they grow back. I don't know if Blade has a similar thing here. I think it all exists. I assume it exists in the same universe. Wesley Snipes was in that. In, in, in most re- the most status, recent season, so, right? Yeah. yeah. There well, are many lines from what we do in the shadows that now make sense. Yep. <laughs> yep. And do we have any Venture Brothers fans here? Because I was oh, yeah, expecting a little bit more yeah. uh, Blackulas. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. And Blackulas. <laughs> it's a good oh, God, God, blood eye. <laughs> Oh, uh, God. Is this the worst movie we've ever covered? No. Mortal Kombat 2 is the worst movie we've ever yeah, covered. Yeah, but nothing will ever be worse than Mortal Kombat 2. Did we even that give was at that least any fun? Oh, I guess that's true. This is kind of above that. Yeah, so this isn't the worst movie we've ever covered. It's the least fun to watch, I think, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> what, uh, some of the exorcists were kind of just a slog. But All right, Harris, how, how do you fix this movie? Uh, square one, like, do you go with, like, this multiple, like, adding all these side the characters? Squad. Yeah, I, the squad, I mean, exactly. I think you pick a tone, because one of the biggest things with this is that, like, if you have it be a goofy, fun Ryan Reynolds superhero movie where everyone's wearing, like, more colorful outfits and wisecracking all the time, I don't think you can then kill off half of your cast of vampire hunters in a haunting, murderous sequence 
and have this like heavy weighty conclusion to the whole thing, you know, I think you have to like pick one or the other. Um, why? Why do they why have to show his pubes? pubes? <laughs> it's so stupid. Yeah, well, these low rise leather pants that they're all wearing. Yeah. <laughs> it was very in then. Um, this is another. This, this is a great example of Parker Posey not pulling off a scene that probably was a bad scene to begin with. Wrong. But, you know. It took him until oh, right yeah, now. Also, he, yeah, he, he waited he until he got the back. Eye, he waits until he's in the, the meeting of the boardroom to pull the arrow out of his eye. So dumb. Uh, he's like holds the dog up to staunch the bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> this guy looks he like Daniel Craig, does he not? He does a little. He's from Battlestar Galactica. Did anyone ever watch that show? No. It was awesome. Oh. First couple seasons. There was only like four seasons, I think. I thought there was six or five. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, this doesn't matter. This here, is not relevant. Here's here's jailbreak coming back in. Yeah. Maybe it's Dracula's time for me fucking to join wardrobe. The fight. Oh, and again, leather pants. But that shirt too. It's like it's got no buttons on it. And like, why is it? Why is it like low rise to the middle as if he has breasts? <laughs> well, he's got. He does have. A kind of, of breasts, you know, yes. like everyone has breasts mostly in, in their own way. Got to show off his muscles. I think it would be cool if he had been the monster guy the entire time. And every time he walked into a room, he was like a hideous monster. And they're like, holy shit, it's that guy who eats us occasionally. Yeah. You know, like that would have been. He's like, oh, I forgot. Sorry. And transforms. Yeah. I mean, I think it's cool. The shape shifting thing is cool, but it would have been cooler if they like resurrected an ancient decaying monster. Like in the first scene when he kills control. that guy, he's got like sharp teeth. He yeah, looks really exactly. Scary. He's just, you know, he barely can talk. And a cool, like fun side plot they could have done is like him trying to do normal life things like they catch him going to like the deli to order a sandwich and he's like oh i'll have the salami and they're like oh my god it's he, a monster he can't get into a bar so he needs to go get an id and then he's trying to drive past the driver's license test and he's like i don't understand how to work this does everyone have to work a standard I, th- I think it would. I just think it would be a much better movie, even if we did it for comedy. It would be a better. But like that's that's the biggest change that I would make is I would pick a thing and and either be like, are we doing a serious Blade movie, kind of like the other ones, or are we doing this kind of goofball shit? And if we're doing the goofball shit, fine. But like commit to it and make it a goofier, funner movie because there wasn't a lot of fun in this. Yeah, you're right it- though that they don't explain how they knew about Dracula, the good guys. Like they're just like, yeah, we have a feeling that have the bad source. guys are up to this. Yeah. <laughs> Secret, the word it, on the streets, the word in the vampire streets. And they have a piece of his armor, which how yeah. they have that. It drops any pretensions of the plot making sense for those jokes. Right. Ron Reynolds. And yeah. how does the armor, like how, do, how can they recombine his DNA? Like they're like, they know that he's, that he's this and that. They know things about him based on a piece of a fleck of armor. And they're able to rebuild what his armor looked like on his entire body based yeah. off like a piece That's of it. Dino DNA. <laughs> it kind of seems like they're referencing whatever music video this is because it's again being a music video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a lot of that. Yeah. I do think the scary Dracula looks cool though. Yeah, I mean, definitely. It's a good costume. It's a good makeup. Um, they introduced in the second one though that the like those vampires that yeah, their mouths are, open those, like yeah. this, right? And mm-hmm. Dracula does that He's too. Got that in too. This. So they kept that yeah, they kept that part of it. And the dog cool. has that. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. that was so dumb. They're yeah, like, can there be vampire dogs? What is this? Yeah. Come on, guys. Oh, stop God. being stupid. It's just so stupid. Uh and like also which really hurts the other scene where again, once Ryan Reynolds is freed later in the movie and they're you know, the big battle is happening. He's discovered that they're vampire dogs, and the vampire dogs come after him. And he has a gun, and he runs away. <laughs> Why? Because yeah. it was like it was like a goofy thing where, like, oh, he's scared of these dogs, and he runs away from the like. It was like, how it was, dare again, you? It was trying to get like something funny in where funny didn't belong. How dare you defend <laughs> Ryan Reynolds and trash pack Parker Posey the way you're doing? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that this effect happens in multiple early 2000 music videos. Yes, We're yeah. walking no, down is, the street, this, normal speed, everything else. Is this forward. Um, slow motion shot from down low at the clouds moving a million miles an hour in the background? If that isn't a music video shot, I don't know what is. But did, did David S. Gore didn't direct music videos though, did he? I don't know. Um, isn't that from? No, I think this is the first thing he ever directed. You know what you could put in the background of this is, uh, the Verve Bittersweet Symphony. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, oh, this is great. There just happens to be a Dracula store. (laughs) They're making fun of my people. Yeah. (laughs) It's cultural appropriation. They sell Count Chocula cereal amongst like Dracula bobbleheads. 
mm-hmm. Dracula everything. <laughs> Come on down to the... I, I want to see their TV commercials in the local area. Like, <laughs> you can't say ghoul. That's our word. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny if it was like a hot topic. Like, we know what that is. But they just wanted to count Chocula cereal in there for some reason. And so it's just a strictly, like, vampire store. That's what it is. Oh, Dracula lunchboxes. Dracula bobbleheads. Keychains. What is that? Rolling matches. papers or condoms? Or know, was it condoms. matches? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, dildos. Oh, the, yeah, the other dildos. It's a vibrator, actually. No, oh, excuse Sorry. me. Sorry. <laughs> this is so stupid. He's yeah, like he's looking, just... he's slowly looking at that box, and as a, an actor, his motivation is he's thinking, my career is over. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's just a terrible actor. I'm sorry. I, I hope I never have to meet this guy and he never listens to this because like, I just think he is bad. I feel like a lot of this is just, again, like, who knows? Maybe in the right role he could be good, but this is not the right role. Like, mm-hmm. why? what are they thinking when they cast him as this, like, moody, ancient, you know, vampire god, you know? And the costume is not helping at all. No, no. And the haircut, too. It's like, you know, I don't know. Just yeah, none give him, of this, like, long hair or Yeah, something. none of this yeah. says ancient vampire to me. I feel like we should also have a counter for the number of times the shot is just someone bursting out of a window. Look, just look, I'm yeah. going to rewind this. I just want to know how many seconds that they hold this shot of him screaming. Boom, out the window again. Yeah, yeah. we've seen at least three times someone has burst out a window. Yeah, there's a lot of people getting thrown out of this windows. This is a, a bit rapey here. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that's that's possibly intentional. Um, he is the bad guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Killing the poor hot topic worker, but here now he yells. Four, five, six, seven. <laughs> longest ten, shot in the movie. Ten, se- ten <laughs> seconds of him just screaming into the camera, like it's <laughs> insane. It's like the, how how long did Kirk's con yell last? <laughs> like three like seconds, two maybe? seconds. Yeah. yeah. Like what is going on? It's just such a yeah, such a poorly made movie. <laughs> these guys just look like action figures. That's yeah. totally what they were going for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This movie still made $130 million or so. Did very well. That's insane. Crazy. Oh, I, I remember. It, it, but it also re- kind of killed the franchise. <laughs> <laughs> well, it made me reminisce on what we talked about with, uh, like, what, Exorcist 4, about how, like, once you got to the mid-2000s, there was a heavy emphasis on just pumping stuff out because DVD sales were yeah. way higher than, you know, they had ever been or ever would be again. Yeah. Wasn't there something like I, I had read that like they knew this was going to be the last Blade movie because um, the rights were going to revert back to Marvel or something? And they actually thought they were going to do first of all they're going to do a prequel that's that focused on Deacon Frost again, mm-hmm. um, Stephen Dorff. Yeah, and uh, and they were also going to do a crossover with that the Kate Beckinsale series Underworld. Um, Underworld. Yeah, oh, they're going to do nice. a crossover with that, and both those things were in development until. Um, for like years until 2011. They still thought they were going to get those off the ground until 2011 when the rights reverted. So this was made in 2004. Hmm. So they had oh. they had the rights for quite a while and just never I would have seen get that, anything done. I would have seen that Underworld crossover and it probably would have been like just very bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> probably. <I agree. laughs> yeah. I don't think that's a hot take. I think you can probably <laughs> lock that one but in. But like I'm pretty sure I would have wanted to see it. Yeah. <laughs> Like Jessica Biel's costume as a like vampire hunter, why would you make your costume so sexy? Yeah, and why is <laughs> it, it like shocks them into inaction? <laughs> yes. Why is it like slightly hippie ish? You know, are, are you also well, getting that? That vibe? was definitely the style. That was okay. Definitely okay, the yeah, era. the style. Yeah. yeah. Um, what? Because she's wearing like a vest. No, th- not this one so much, but some of the other ones, like the there, shirt like, later. Do you remember that shirt she has later? That's like this pattern, like. It's like pretty brightly colored for for a, a movie about vampire hunters. I mean, the hip huggers were definitely oh yeah, the, the low rise then. like yeah exactly the low rise. You can only move a certain way to make sure that your butt crack does not come out of the top of them. And honestly, those are better looking jeans than mom jeans. I know I know mom jeans are hot right now. I know I'm gonna come out. I think you're all the way revealing your jeans. age right now. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're not here to debate this. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think there is a debate. So <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'm with Harris on this. Um, uh, Pat Oswald also looks like a baby in this. Yeah, um, he's pretty young. He, I, I don't know if it's that he's pretty young or he's not aging well now. Um, <laughs> but he definitely looks like this is 16 years ago. I guess 16 years ago, I guess none of us look 
like we did yeah, 16 years ago. I guess. But um, yeah. I think you were right about it being bad casting, but it's not a bad cast. Yeah, no, that's a, I would agree with that 100%. I don't except for maybe the vampire the the Dracula guy. Oh, that guy's bad. I don't dislike any of these actors. I just wish they were in a better movie and in more appropriate roles some in some cases. As much as I hate Ryan Reynolds, I feel like playing top 4 with him is going to be a lot of fun. Is oh that what God, we're going to do? Yeah. Is I, that are you trying to segue? Think we <laughs> should. Okay. Uh, this this um, came out wait, in... Oh, go ahead. Do you know... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say that this came out in 2004, and then Wolverine Origins came out, what, 2008? I would say six. No, yeah. it was no. nine. Nine? Yeah. yeah. Really? And that's, he... Yeah. That's like his next superhero movie after after this, I think. Mm-hmm. When was Green Lantern? No. Oh, yeah, Green, Green Lantern, Lantern was, was after, after that. That was after that. Oh. So I feel like they went the other way. They're like, he made too many dick jokes. We're going to seal up his mouth. Yeah. Completely. <laughs> He's not allowed to talk at all. But we're going to give him the most loquacious character in all of Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are you you run the top four in this, don't you, Matt? Yes. Or, yeah. yeah. Let me get that going. Oh, I explained to Don what top four is. That's good that yes. we don't have to. Yeah. Um, and he was like, I already know because this podcast is really influential on my life. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't everyone know? But also, yeah. <laughs> for the viewers at home, though, let's go over. What is top yeah. four? <laughs> I also think Ryan Reynolds' top four might be really hard because there are so many candidates that I think could be on there. And I have no I think idea. there's only one. That, I only have one that I'm sure of. There's only one that I'm absolutely certain of. I think he, it's going to be funny when Deadpool 2 is on there and Deadpool 1 is not. Yeah, that would be funny. <laughs> yeah. He also has such an interesting career trajectory because, like, arguably his career is during this time, like the beginning of it. You know, uh, the, he, obviously he had that sitcom in the year 2000 or whatever. And now he starts doing these, like, Movies where he's the funny guy, you know, like the partier. What's his big one? He's in waiting. Van, Van, Van Wilder. Van Wilder. That was hey, we're huge. Just giving, we're just throwing out potential answers for this. Uh, yeah, and then man. he like does he disappear ever for a while, and then kind of has a resurgence with not Deadpool. Re- not really, because he was kicking around doing these other like he would get the X Men thing, and then he would get the Green Lantern thing, and you know, like his career was never dead. He was making movies throughout. Just that most time. of them were middling movies. Yeah, he was just... big enough to turn down Van Wilder too. Yeah, right. Yeah, he, he was big enough. Not not to do Van Wilder too, but not big enough to get like a, a premiere franchise of his own. Yeah, Van um, Wilder. I, I it's crazy that that comes up because that movie was like so popular for a time in my life. I feel like, and now is like never thought about or talked about ever. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's before we mention before we more, mention all the movies. All right. Yeah. Movies. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Let me cue up the. So uh, top four is where we try to guess the top four uh, movies for a certain uh, performer or director um, on IMDb. Um, and we we've realized there's no rhyme or reason to what IMDb says the top four are. And it's so not based on popularity of the number. Of it's definitely based know. on stupidity and only yeah. stupidity. <laughs> so I, IMDb. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, Don, as our guest, you get to guess one movie first. Of what will be the top four? Yeah. For, yeah. Well, Deadpool. That is correct. <laughs> I'm going to guess Deadpool two. That is also correct. Uh-oh. Um, the next two are harder. Oh, no. <laughs> well, yeah, because it could be anything else. Those are the two ones <laughs> yep. that he's probably best known for. Smart guesses. And more uh, recent. I'm going to try I'm gonna try for Van Wilder. That would have been my guess. That is wrong. Oh. No. I've, got, I've got another guess. How are you doing? Yeah, now you go. We keep going around. Free guy? That Ooh, is that's wrong. Guess. Wrong. I'm going to go with waiting. That oh, is. that's a good one. Oh, wrong. wrong. Oh, oh this is wow. hard. <laughs> okay, uh, Green Lantern. That's, <laughs> at this point, that's wrong. 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 All right, are you guys ready for a hint? Sure. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so there's two remaining, one of which we have mentioned today, so you guys are just forgetting it. Um, <laughs> or we just haven't gotten to it yet. <laughs> yeah. The other one we have not mentioned, it is like, I would call it an indie. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, it's, I will say it's a movie where his performance was um, touted as being really good because of the nature of the way this movie was Oh, made. you gave us too many clues. I ah, already got it. Damn it. <laughs> All right. Well, we're back to Don. That'd be the nature of it, the way it was made. Well, like it was made by a tree. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> it, was made by, it was made by cobbler elves overnight. <laughs> it had a very stylistic um, uh, manner in which it was like Birdman or whatever. 127 it's all one shot. hours. 
No, that oh. is wrong. And wrong. Ryan is it not James <laughs> Franco? <laughs> it was oh. uh, Buried is the movie he's talking about. He spends the entire time in a box. Oh. Buried. That was him? Yeah. I forgot about that. A movie that everyone forgot about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it really and, wasn't And that you were good. pretty close with that 127 hours thing. It was kind of a similar idea, yeah. 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 Uh, Colin. Uh, I think it's X-Men Origins Wolverine. That is correct. Yes. Oh, wow. We didn't even get to like hit Hitman's Bodyguard or any of the, uh, the that one on Netflix that he did recently. Yeah. Oh, so just out of curiosity, let's That's see crazy. where his career ever like kind of fell apart. Where's the lull? Has anyone ever seen the um, the green screen version of uh, X Men? That's the only Wolverine version I've Origins? ever seen. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Where it'll be a finalized shot, and then oh, the next yeah, right. one is on green screen. They didn't finish it all, mm. but it got released, and it basically. It was the portents of how bad this was going to be. It never really wow. came together in the end. The oh, show. so I saw X-Men Origins Wolverine in the theaters, so I did I did not see that version. Oh, you're missing out then. You would love this version. Oh, okay. Mm. Sounds good. Okay, so the first big movie he was in, it was in 1999, a movie called Dick with uh, Michelle Williams. and Oh, yeah. The Richard, the Richard Nixon. Nixon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Comedy. I love that movie. I saw that in the theaters, too. He plays Chip. I don't know who Chip is, but... Right. I think he's one of the like sassy the young love in- interests. Yeah, exactly. Two guys, a girl, and a pizza place. Of course, he was on for eighty-one episodes. Holy crap! Um, Van Wilder, that's his big thing. Yeah, buying the cow. There you go. I told you about that one. Um, let's see. Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Oh, he oh, makes yeah. like a Van Wilder issue. I love. I he's, love he's his the, part in that. The, the doctor. He's the, the doctor surgeon. because because his his line. Animal I always semen. remember his line. Oh, he's like. Yes. Right. Um, K- Kumar asked for marijuana to sedate the patient, and he's like, "Marijuana, but, but why?" But why? <laughs> <laughs> so good. Blade Trinity. He's in the Amityville Horror remake. Oh, oh I yeah, saw I that in theaters that. too. Yeah. He's in. Waiting. He had a much more normal looking beard than that. Him, not this, painted on. This dude's got a bunch of my money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, here's another Colin classic that you forgot about: Smoking Aces. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, what a terrible Smoking movie aces. that is. Oh my god. <laughs> And uh, a movie called Just Friends, where Wait, he I, wears a fat suit. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love. I I have Just Friends on DVD. Oh my God, God I remember that too. Wow, <laughs> Colin, you are you are Ryan, in the Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds world. got a bunch of my money. Colin's like, why is Ryan Reynolds so awesome? How did I not he, realize? I mean, it sounds like he's killing it, right? In the yeah. early aughts. Yeah, sure. And then he's in a movie called Definitely Maybe, which is like a. I've seen, seen that comedy. too. Also, I multiple times for the newspaper. I think I like that it was movie. Not great. Fuck. He's in, <laughs> uh, realizing I really like his career. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Here we go. 2009 is pretty good for him. He's got, well, good in quotations. He's got, uh, X-Men origins, Wolverine, mm-hmm. which is a terrible choice for his career. Uh, adventure land, mm-hmm. the proposal with, um, seen that too. Sandra Bullock. Got that one on DVD. <laughs> then then he comes out with Buried in 2010, which was like that indie darling movie. Green Trying Lantern. You can act. Excuse me. Green Lantern is 2011. Yeah. And he's in a movie called The Change Up with, uh, with what's oh, his name? Oh, yeah, right. From Arrested Development, mm-hmm. uh, Bateman. Then uh, Safe House. I think I've seen part of Change Up. It wasn't Safe good. House. Safe House is with Denzel Washington. No one is safe. That's the tagline. Oh well, it's also not safe house. It's yeah, it's like he tries <laughs> to. Not safe house. It's like he has like three different avenues. He tries to either go like rom com, action, or like what superhero? I but guess. But funny in all of them. Yeah, he has I mean, un- trying to try. Yeah. He has an uncredited a cameo, I guess, in the movie Ted with uh, mm-hmm. Teddy Bear. Okay. Teddy Bear. Okay. He does voices in The Crudes and a movie called Turbo. Uh, with the snail. With the snail. Mm-hmm. Oh. R I P D. Oh yeah, oh, that, that uh, Jeff, Men in Black Jeff Bridges uh, knockoff that they were trying to get going and did not take. Is it Jeff Bridges or yeah. Samuel L. Jackson? Or, no, I thought Jeff Samuel Bridges. L. Jackson was the Hitman bodyguard thing. Yeah, okay. yeah, we're getting to that. He has another uncredited role in A Million Ways to Die in the West. So he's obviously buds with uh, what's his name, uh, Seth MacFarlane. Okay, that makes sense. Then he's in a movie called The Captive, which I've never heard of. Is Seth MacFarlane Canadian as well? No, he's no, he from like be, Rhode right? Island. Oh, or Rhode Island. Connecticut. Oh yeah, like because of Co-hog. the Family Guy is like yeah okay. And yeah, you know, it's pretty interesting because Ryan Reynolds is like pretty consistent for the past twenty years. Of, like he's had he's had ups, but not really any downs. It's been well, like ups and then 
middle oh, of the road I would shit. No downs that, for his wallet. Right. Exactly. I would argue yes. that 90% of the movies we just mentioned are like forgettable. Colin's favorites. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm embarrassed about how much I actually like Ryan Reynolds. And then I didn't even realize it. And then, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with Ryan Reynolds. He does a lot of things very well, obviously. And I think he is. he works in a lot of these movies. I think the Deadpool movies are great, you know? Um, they're very but, good, but but a movie like this just shows you that like when the material isn't good, and like he's done so much know. Deadpool shit, it's crazy. Oh, then he's in an awesome movie called Life. Has anyone ever seen that? With Eddie Murphy and no, no. Martin Lawrence? Yeah, because that's the one I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're thinking of the one of Spaceship. Yeah. Okay, because that is actually a little more like this an awesome movie. Sci-fi. The one with Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence. They discover like awesome. an organism. What do you mean? You don't yes, like the yes, one with we, Eddie Murphy? That came out a couple years ago. Yeah. I'm so upset. <laughs> you want to talk about the Eddie Murphy? Who else is in there? <laughs> version of life. I think we should talk about um, it. Oh wait, have, Don, have you seen Life with Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence? I have Lawrence? not, but I've oh. seen the Life that we're talking about, Ryan Reynolds. I don't no, know. no, this is the one where Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence wait, are sorry. sentenced to prison it, for life. Is, uh, look, you almost see uh, her vag right here. Like, oh, what? oh my! <laughs> they definitely I, had to like CGI something out there. I yeah. am sure they had her wearing a modesty whatever. For this, they didn't actually have like a bag sticker hanging out when they shot it. Yeah, they, they yeah. This scene is she unnecessary. She just had a fake crotch on. <laughs> they just wanted her naked on set. The thing about this scene is like, I, what the fuck room like that, is she in? Didn't it seem like that? That was a scene that was just like, we have Jessica Biel in this movie, and I think we need to get her naked at least for one scene. You know? Yeah, because what room is she in? What shower doesn't make any has sense. ever? What shower has ever looked like that? Yeah. It, Look, do you see the movie that's on TV right there? It's a movie called Incubus. Which is famous because the entire thing Esperanto. is in Esperanto. Um, <laughs> there's like a lot of references to Esperanto in this movie. Do you guys read the, that the, fact? There's like an Esperanto flag that they use yeah. for the city flag. <laughs> like what the fuck? And like they just <laughs> keep why? harping on it. Well, yeah. much like Esperanto, this movie is indecipherable. For us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I was, and everyone's forgotten about it. Wait, so I w- I just figured it. I saw that Shatner was in it, William Shatner. Mm-hmm. And I just figured it's like the only vampire related thing that William Shatner had ever done, but apparently it's not a vampire thing. Nope. Not at all? I don't think so. I it's mean, about Incubi. I've never seen it. Incubi, yeah. It's about the band Incubus, actually. That's what the band Incubus is named after. Oh, man. They should have called out a Wait, warning the on band that. Incubus is named after a an Esperanto movie? I believe so. Here, she so talked that's... over my joke. <laughs> we'll go again. I'll laugh. They said they should have called out a warning on that. <laughs> That's, I'm glad we got that in twice. <laughs> Look, Harris, it you're, trying to, you're trying to take over this podcast like a real megalomaniac. All right, let me <laughs> let me take the wheel and steer here and, and drive. Yep, good. These are titles of Incubus songs. <laughs> <laughs> I got that. Without even knowing any of these titles of Incubus songs, I understood exactly what was going on. Life, the 2017 science fiction movie, also stars Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, no, the wrong uh, one. We've seen that. Nobody wants to talk about it. Can we get back to the Martin Lawrence and Eddie Murphy one? <laughs> that movie's good. I cried. <sighs> you cr- See, th- this is another movie that just didn't make up its mind what it wanted to be. It was depressing. It was a depressing comedy that was very funny at the beginning. But once they go to prison, it gets l- progressively less and less funny, especially when they spend the rest of their lives there. This it's a it's a hilarious comedy about like two black men in the Jim Crow era South who are unjustly convicted and sentenced to life in prison and spend their lives in prison. <laughs> and they make like, the best of it. They do make the best of it. And that's not. That's not. And they good. escape eventually. Oh fuck! Ah, oh, spoilers. <laughs> oh jeez. I spoiled it really yeah. bad. Oh, well. Now they're never going to watch it, which is good because it's not that good a movie. It's pretty good. I wish I remembered. So there were a lot of funny jokes, and I feel like there's probably like some quotable lines that I've totally forgotten. It has Bernie Mac and yeah, some other R.I.P. Got a lot of talent. Got a lot yeah. of talent there. Um, Matt, what are you looking up now? I was just, I'm just. Do you like, want to do you want to read through any other actors' entire IMDb's? For the I'm just audience? in shock at his career. It's like just no, he's fire he's after over the Ryan Reynolds. Thing. Yeah. He just yeah, slapped I'm, that lady in the face. I'm confused. Yeah. Are you are you becoming more sympathetic to Ryan Reynolds in general, or are you never? Be, are you digging digging him deeper into the the hole of? No, he's of realizing hate. that Ryan Reynolds is probably like very close to being a billionaire, and he can't figure out how he feels about <laughs> he's it. He's in Hobbs and Shaw. Have you guys seen that movie? He makes a cameo. Oh, I have not seen it. I kind of like, want to see it. I think when kids see him now, like when he makes a cameo in a movie like that, they think, oh, Deadpool. Deadpool. Yeah, they don't think Ryan Reynolds. Like, no one knows who the fuck Ryan Reynolds is. I think everyone knows who Ryan Reynolds is. I don't know. The Hitman's, what's it called? The Hitman's bodyguard? Hitman's wife's bodyguard also. That's Yeah, why? He's both of their bodyguards. (laughs) Why is there a sequel to that? It's a forgotten Uh, movie. Because it made a lot of money and because people went and saw it. I think people went and saw the stupid sequel. 
Why? People like Ryan Reynolds. Who are these people? I don't know, but uh, Colin, you're one of these people. <laughs> You've seen his entire You've collection of movies. He's made. Some All right. of them multiple times. All right, you guys want to have some fun? All right. Let's do top four Parker Posey. Oh, oh, oh hell yeah. Oh, this will be good. You Let's guys go. will oh, not be good at this. Oh, man. <laughs> um, okay. Well, um, you can try. Dazed and Confused. That's Off a good to one. a good start. <sighs> That would not have been my first choice, but that is a good one. I'm going to go with Party Girl. That is wrong. The movie that put her on wrong. the map is not. This, this is why IMDb is stupid. Go Waiting ahead. for Guffman? Also wrong. Damn. Wrong. Go Blade Trinity. That is correct. Oh, two for two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why? Two right? That is so stupid. Um, <laughs> now the points leader. I'm going to go with... Uh, Think, I feel like I should go with another one of the. It's got to be at least one of the. Um, I'll the, give you. That's what I'm going to do. Ones. So don't do that. I'll give you guys this. There are no more indies left. Oh no! Fuck. For the indie queen. I don't even know if I have a guess. Um, what is the? I'll give better hints uh, after you guys make one more guess each. Okay. I can't even think of. I'm just going to guess a Christopher Christopher. Guessed well, you can guess movie the anyway. Guess movie, and I'm going. I'm just going to guess Clock Watchers, which is not going to be it either because it's an indie. What's Clock Watchers? It's a it's an indie with Lisa Kudrow and a bunch of other famous actresses of that era that came out in like the early 2000s. Oh, cool! Like Let me just push this button here. Wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wrong. Uh, a Mighty Wind. I wish I had to fart so bad right now because I could blast a mighty wind in your face. <laughs> wrong. It is wrong. You don't right. have... I'm, I'm really surprised at you not having a fart sound effect somewhere on that thing. That is true. I <laughs> failed you. Over I failed All right. you. Give us some clues. Well, I've, I was going to think, is it best in show? No. Ah, wrong. I, I would consider all those guesses indies, and I said they're not. There's yeah. no more yeah. indies. I, I just feel like we all wanted to say them. Yeah, yes. you just wanted to impress <laughs> that you've seen these movies. Right? Yeah. So give us a clue. Okay. I was going to go with Faye Grimm. Or Henry Fool, also indie. <laughs> you're, also indies. You're just okay. making names up. Now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> these are like some of her most acclaimed movies. You're such a big Parker Posey fan. You've never seen anything that she's good in. <laughs> All right, okay. go ahead, Matt. They are both from. Both of these movies are from, I th believe, the mid two thousands. I know one is for sure. I'm not 100 percent when the other That's one is. That's the hint. That's nothing. The early to mid two thousands. I'll continue. Uh, they're both sequels. Um. One is sort of a revival of a like a movie that hadn't been a series that hadn't been around for a while. I said Fagrim. <laughs> the other one is is more of a direct sequel. It is a third in a in a uh, series of movies, much like Blade Trinity. Uh, yeah, I'll give you that for now, and then I'll I'll build the hints as My we God. go. I uh... if I I'll I'll say this: if I gave you the directors of these movies, you would know right away what they are. Fuck. Interesting. Um, okay. I... One of them, she plays sort of like a similar to this, like a villain sidekick. Uh-huh. Uh, and then the other one, I do not even remember who she oh, is. Oh, I feel like I know what I'm going to guess. If we keep our mouths shut long enough, Matt will just keep on giving us. Yeah, <laughs> I know what I'm going to guess, and it's going to be wrong. All right, well, you, Colin, you can... <laughs> well, it's like the more clues I give, the, the less like your yeah. your correct answer is worth, you know? <laughs> um, Colin, go ahead. I, I've got... Oh, I love her in uh, Josie and the Pussycats. Oh, cool. Oh. That's wrong. Wrong. <laughs> oh, she's so good in that, and she's a villain, I think. Yeah. It's not a sequel. I know. It's a sequel to the Archie comics, I guess. Okay, one of them... <laughs> The one that is a revival of an older series uh, stars an actor. One of the main stars of the movie is an actor who has been canceled heavily. Spacey? Mm -hmm. Yep. A revival of an older K-Pax 2? Kevin uh, Spacey. <laughs> <laughs> K-Pax A revival of an older series with Kevin Spacey in it. Oh, man. I feel really dumb. This is hard. This was a movie that was like a big event when it came out. Like everyone thought it was like a really inventive idea. This is sure, surefire going to be like a, a huge hit. The Your more usual, usual suspect. suspect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then this movie came out and it was kind of like instantly forgotten. And the guy who played the main character who people thought would have a career after this, like didn't, he was in like one other movie. Oh, so it's not Spacey or it is Spacey is in it, but he's not the main character. Oh, He's the main villain. I'll oh, say but that. the main character also like didn't 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 really right. amount okay. to much. Yeah. <sighs> Whose turn is it? It's well, I I skipped my turn last time. I don't know. I don't even have a guess. What? 
All right, all right. I can't believe how bad I am. All at this. right, this is gonna throw you guys. Ready? Uh-huh. In a in a no, po- don't give us something that's gonna throw us. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's no. gonna help us. That's, it is gonna help you. Yeah. In a posthumous role, Marlon Brando is in this movie. Oh. Oh, oh! It's the Superman one. The uh, what is it called? Superman Returns. Yes, Superman yeah. Returns. Yeah. And that's a uh, yeah. that's the fourth one though. That's not a third one. That's not the clue. Oh, f- the yeah. other one is the third. Yeah. Oh, and Spacey is the villain in that. Right. Oh, yeah. and I remember her in that. Yeah. She's so good. She's the yeah. best. She's um, the henchman that has lines of dialogue. Yeah. Yes. Cal Penn is in it also, and he has no lines mm. of dialogue. Yeah. A serious role for Cal Penn in that one. Um. So what's the other one? The other one now is a horror movie. It's in a horror series. It's the third movie. There has since been one more in the series, and one is on the way. Paranormal activity. Oh, oh, Scream, right? Yeah. yeah. Scream I, three. She's a, that's oh, such she's a in weird Scream little, 3? Yeah. yeah. Such a oh, tiny part. Yeah. Scream 3 is the one a, I, mean, not I a know tiny the part, least. Really, but yeah. It was. Is she like a news reporter or something? It's something. I think she's like the competition to Courtney Cox or yeah, something like I that. I feel like yeah. that seems about right. I feel like I should have gotten something for mentioning Josie and the Pussycats <laughs> in some you, way. You got the wrong sound effect. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, man. Uh, um, so he, we, we have, like, the really actually, this is a series where Dracula breaks in, or this is a scene where Dracula breaks in and, like, slowly, methodically murders all the, what are they called? The Night Stalkers? The mm-hmm. Night, night, yeah, Night Stalker yeah. gang. It's stupid. Um, And you can tell that it's another scene where, like, they're really making a meal out of this and like trying to play up the suspense, but it's really not that sus- like they do all the things they're trying to like turn this into a horror movie. But again, it's like, what is your tone? What are you going for? And meanwhile, and- he's Dracula, like arguably the most villainous like creature of all time. And he's like struggling to get this little girl out of a fucking like three foot. Deep yeah. he, like, and he threatened to throw a baby, but I don't think he did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and- I was going to say, there's a lot of like throwing children around in these movies. In yeah. The first one, yeah. they threw that little Asian girl across in the street. Front of the bus, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and also the the actor again. He's bad. He's he's bad. He's just he's not threatening. He's not menacing. He's just like a guy in leather pants with a like a shirt that like. Listen, he, if you don't he, think a guy in leather pants with a shirt is menacing, <laughs> I don't even know. Go to West Hollywood, my <laughs> <West> friend. <laughs> they get menacing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're like running out of things to say about this movie. Um. We're this just whole, watching it. This whole middle section is just a generic like fight sequence. Yeah, yeah. time. It it goes from generic fight sequences to generic prepping for fight sequences that are all way too long. Yeah, this is when the bow and arrow scene where she's practicing bow and arrow really drags the movie. Yeah, you well, this is the this is kind of the thing. Is like there's this is if this was a ninety minute movie. It would probably be a little more watchable, mm-hmm. you know. Like, it, you it guys, would still not be any is this, better. But. Is this one of her hippie outfits you were talking about, Kyle? No, just wait for it. It's <laughs> the, her Harlequin. Uh, yeah, outfit. it's that. It's that one shirt I was talking about. I, we'll, we'll see if it happens or not. <laughs> yeah, to dream about just, this beforehand. It's happened in Colin's imagination. <laughs> yeah, like, like, we'll see if this is actually in the movie or just in my Jessica Biel fan fiction. <laughs> yep. you know, it would be so great as a hippie. Yeah. <laughs> For uh, a lack of material here, I'm I'm consulting my notes that I took when I watched this movie. <laughs> so my first note: opening VO sucks. Fuck you, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> that's, that's on brand for you, yeah. <laughs> oh, the, the first thing you see in this movie is someone gives a middle finger to the sun. I just wrote dumb. <laughs> this is dumb. I, is that supposed to be Triple H at that point? I think he's the I only character so. that that could be, right? Yeah. I thought it was Parker Posey. No, because she's like the leader. She's she goes out in front of them. Oh, okay. That's one of the guys who's not in the in the front. I said the opening graphics of this movie and the end graphics look like something you can make in in iMovie <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like today. Um, this is such a trope, like writing something in blood. Blood on the curtain, yeah. yeah, on your shower curtain. Yeah, yeah, because this whole place is. Oh, basically this must be showers. where she was taking that shower, though. Right? Yeah, everywhere is a shower with curtains. <laughs> I guess. Um, Ryan Reynolds pubes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole note. note. <laughs> Parker Posey edits in Final Cut with DV cam footage. <laughs> I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. That was a cool part. Um, the Vampire Store with Count Chocula. Yep. Um, hmm. Is oh. Jessica Biel's character like really attached to Natasha Leone? Was that established in the movie? No, not at all. Just she's just upset that she's dead. Yes, this seems more great. upset than being upset that the other guys that she works with were mm, dead. Not as interesting. Yes. Blade just standing like 10 meters away going, use it. Use it. <laughs> use it. Yeah. 
He's talking to her, the actor. (laughs) (laughs) The acting's terrible. Just use this as your motivation. (laughs) Um, I put Wesley Snipes is really terrible. (laughs) (laughs) Terrible or great? Um, I like that, uh, or I don't like that. Dracula's character, they're just like, oh yeah, by the way, his name's Drake. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah that really doesn't work now like, when there's him, like a famous him, person named Drake. Right. <laughs> call him Vlad or something, right? Yeah, or call him Drac. Yeah. <laughs> just anything. Don't just call him Drake for some reason. Um. Oh, I just got that Drake is like a play on Drac. It's like sort of, that's... Uh, yeah. Okay. It's very similar. It might also be a Marvel character, right? Probably. Maybe. Well, Dracula was... Dracula in Marvel Comics for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because th- they got the rights to do that somehow in the 60s or whatever. Um, well, I don't even know if that's under copyright still. Yeah, Dracula's yeah. public still. domain by then. <laughs> yes, of course, of course. The public's <laughs> domain. Um, yeah, what I was going to say is that uh, there's an animated Batman movie where Batman goes against uh, Dracula, and Dracula goes to a party at Bruce Wayne's house posing as Mr. Alucard, and then, mm. and then Batman realizes that Alucard is Dracula. He sees it, he sees it in Bat- a mirror. Yeah. He's like, wait a second. <laughs> yep, exactly. He is the world's greatest detective. So <laughs> That's Stuff so like that stupid. does not get by him. Yeah. He sees it in a mirror, but he can't see Dracula in the mirror. And then he knows something's He's up. He's playing Castlevania. He's uh, like, yeah. wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like Alucard was a Castlevania character, too. <laughs> yeah. Not the first people clever enough to find Oh, that Parker way. Posey's hair, like, from this point on. Oh, Parker Posey's hair throughout is, is pretty <laughs> bizarre, but I like that he calls it out. I also like when she's like, um, <laughs> when she like is making fun of Blade's tattoos. She's like, oh, I love your ink. Does it mean something? Fucking stupid. <laughs> she says the best line in there in the movie. She's like, will you just stop talking about dicks? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I was just trying to read some of his dialogue, especially in this scene. It was so bad. And another excuse just to have him with no shirt on. It's like, this guy has a... Abs. Like, doing yeah, need to show crunches it. for weeks before this. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I I don't think I've ever seen a movie where he doesn't take his shirt off that he's in. I think if you I don't did, think I've ever seen a movie where he doesn't take it, his shirt off it, at all. If you did, you'd ask for your money back. Yeah. Look, he's so. just so like 13 years old. He's like, I just ate some garlic and farted. Silent, I do silent but deadly. I do like the rom coms. I like Just Friends. I like the proposal. Oh. I like Definitely Maybe. Those are all like. Story wise, they're good rom coms. It's not about, you know, necessarily that he's in them. I guess he does a good job. <laughs> Trying to, try to downplay your fanboy crush on Ryan Reynolds. That's okay. Sandra I'm Bullock ju- is in one of those movies. I'm not judging you. It's okay. Matt that has the Ryan Reynolds problem. Yep. I'm I am pretty much He just consistently neutral. has sucked for twenty years, yet has a career <laughs> and has a beautiful wife and I think children with her. And his life is awesome, <laughs> and it's inexplicable why. <laughs> because I want to get a lot of. I want to see sour grapes here. <laughs> I want to see Matt write a whole book, and there's a huge chapter in the middle just called the Ryan Reynolds problem. I, I, Forget I, a chapter. I, that's the name if, of the book. Yeah. If, if Matt wrote a book, if, if Matt wrote a memoir of his life, it would be 340 pages of bitching about Ryan Reynolds. Chapter one: dick jokes. <laughs> chapter two: abs. Chapter three, <laughs> tattoo above your pubes. Here's the thing, though. Here's what we're getting at that we kind of aren't realizing. There, at some point in Matt's mind, he projected a possible life path for himself, and it was become a famous actor, <laughs> become Ryan star Reynolds. in action movies, yeah. um, star in superhero movies, use my comedy chops to make people <laughs> laugh, and be both both the world's sexiest man and the world's funniest man. And then he's seeing Ryan Reynolds live his dream, and he can't help but feel a little bit envious. Well, we, we you all... You stole my birthright! <laughs> don't, my birthright. don't we all want to be incredibly good-looking and do subpar work and get paid heavily and rewarded with beautiful women for it? It is the American dream. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, a little bit we all kind of but want I don't, to be like him. I'm not going to begrudge somebody else succeeding. I still think the door is open for me to become a Ryan Reynolds-esque person. I just need to learn how to act. Do some crunches. <laughs> yeah. Some. Figure out what a crunch is and do many of them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I think Triple H is kind of stealing this scene. I'm really surprised. It would be a lot better if Triple H was just Dracula. Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, that's not a dumb idea. That's actually, I, I think that could work. I, I would love to see them like dye his hair black too. 
Plus, they would give him less lines because it would be like, oh, we're not having him talk much, which I think that's how you do it. Character. Make the Dracula yeah. character scary. Like, he doesn't yeah. speak. Yeah, he barely has lines he, in this. He shouldn't just, also just be hanging out in the room with other people doing nothing, which right. he does continuously in this right, movie. Yeah. I thought the best, the scariest part was when he was in the other room and they're like, they're like, oh, he's feeding. He just keeps on eating people. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Okay, that's scary. You know, like then you go to talk to him and he's like, hey, what's up? You shouldn't have woken me. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, I remember no tone at board all. rooms are terrifying. <laughs> yeah. How do I know English? I don't know. Don't worry about it, man. <laughs> so what do you wake me up for? <laughs> I've only ever seen this movie movie once but gangs of new york have you guys seen it mm-hmm. oh yeah yep. <laughs> wait, wait 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 you've only seen this movie once or you've only seen gangs of new york once both actually i've only seen both <laughs> okay. once okay Good to um know. but i've seen gangs of new york a lot more times than once it's possible i might it's have not seen a gangs of new york's time. watching contest colin but <laughs> I, i've also seen it many many times <laughs> well one thing Is that frames per second fps for her firing the arrows oh yeah, yeah look at that frames feet, per per second. feet per second it's gotta be feet um, but anyway, Gangs of New York, uh, Bill like, the Butcher is played by Daniel Day-Lewis. And all I remember in that movie is like in the theater, just every time he was on screen being scared that he was going to stab the person mm. next to him. And yep. he really has that like fear. Like that's what Dracula needed to be in this movie. Like you know? maybe he's just going to randomly eat somebody. Eat someone. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. They just need to have him with blood on his mouth like at all times. Like he's, by he, the end, he's basically working for them. You yeah. know, like he keeps Hannibal King alive, presumably at what's her name's command you know and, and the little girl and stuff and it's like if he's that easy to control like i don't know why like, are you afraid yeah, of him yeah exactly <laughs> he owes them for introducing him to dressing that way i guess <laughs> yeah i guess <laughs> oh and this this guy just randomly shows up yeah i also love how they just bring in what's his name calder um just yeah. this random what is he and <laughs> This was, is such a trope too. Like the if you're watching this video, I'm probably already dead. It looks like she recorded it like that day. Yeah, and she's, she's got very specific instructions outfit. about like in that case, here <laughs> yeah. are some things that you should know yeah. to yeah. finish the plot of this movie that we're in. It's <laughs> unclear. It's almost as if Dracula like directed this little video before he uh, <laughs> murdered her. You have any last words for your friends? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the other thing Parker Posey taught him besides, like, how to wear leather pants is, like, how to use a DV cam to, you know, (laughs) record video. If you haven't found my body, start video two. If you (laughs) found my body, start video three. Yes, exactly. (laughs) If you choose path number one, watch video number one. It's a choose your own adventure. of a fucking death video. (laughs) If I was mauled by cougars, flip to video 18. <laughs> and Gerald Ford died today. <laughs> and he was gay. That's exactly what I was thinking of. Gerald he was torn, about, torn apart by wolves. Oh, come, oh, come on. on. He's not going to be torn apart by wolves. You're the one that wants to go on vacation for two weeks. <laughs> Anything can happen. <laughs> Gerald Ford. <laughs> Gerald, former president Gerald Ford. Do you guys know where that sketch comes from? Um, it's from originally not SNL. It's from uh, the Dana Carvey show. Oh, oh really? and that show, it was like probably the funniest sketch on the Dana Carvey show. And that show ended so abruptly that they were like, or it's possible. They, I can't remember if they used it on the show or if they like filmed it as a thing and it never aired or something. And they just right. like, they repurposed it for SNL. One wow. of the writers or whoever. Like, that makes sense. It. Yeah. yeah. So that does that mean the Dana Carvey show was produced by Lauren Michaels as well or something like that? I believe it was. Mm. Yes. Or else they just hired a writer from the show and he was like, oh. Yeah. Half the guys nobody seen hopped over to SNL from that mm. show. You guys ever watch the kids in the hall? Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. They're coming out with a that new season. Your, that oh, was really? your whole thought. <laughs> Was yeah, that, yeah, have you kids, ever watched the kids at all? Just, just serving up a little, little take yeah. a little poll. <laughs> yeah, just taking polls. Why uh, not? One hundred Karens agree. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do we want to go back to Blade Trinity and how bad this fucking Dracula guy is? I guess <laughs> this little girl is like not a character. I don't even remember. Yeah. I watched this movie a few days ago and I don't even remember. This, the is, this, of this. Is a, this is a great example of what I'm talking about, about like just making a meal out of a scene that should have been like two quick shots or something. Guns, should have been cut. Like, you know, like oh, crash. here's another. Pube tattoo. Yeah. Who Belts. was that? Guns. That was Jessica, that was Biel. Jessica Biel. <laughs> what do you think? It's Blade? <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I thought it was Blade. The round, the round, low rise. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be funny if Blade was also wearing like low rise hip hop <laughs> yes. jeans. He's white from the neck down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I got to fit in, motherfucker. <laughs> gloves. All the red. So uh, many gloves. Oh, gloves. Oh, God. 
Uh, yeah, this scene is thing. long, and it means I nothing. Know, I know. It's it's literally just like a, a bunch like of this stuff isn't time. used in the battle. Well, it, it's B roll that the second unit well, team got. Yeah, literally, but you don't have to use all the B roll. As an editor, I think you would. I don't. I'm not an you, expert. You, this. you just got to fill that in. Editor. Studios like we needed to be two o five. It needed to be exactly two uh, two hours and five minutes long. Did you ask about the iPod? The iPod is basically a character in this movie. Oh, that's true. I forgot that she puts it on. And it, you know what I what stood out to me was someone saying MP3 out loud, which oh, yeah. I haven't heard in years, and I appreciated for some reason. She likes to listen to MP3s when she works or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you guys read the bit of trivia that when she shot the arrow, she got so good at it that it went through the camera lens and destroyed a three hundred thousand dollar camera? I didn't know that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's cool. They that's cool. But, as they fuck. Were, that's... but obviously, they're really smart when they were like, "Okay, try to aim directly at the expensive." They camera said place. they had a plexiglass thing like protecting everyone near the camera and at the camera itself, and the only place that didn't have the plexiglass was the little oh. opening over the lens, and she got it directly into that. Damn. This is why we can't have real bow and arrows on set anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, can we? I, uh, you know, I kind of missed the days when throwing a bow and arrow into a movie, uh, people thought that was interesting. Yeah, yeah I, famously I, when movies first came out, guns didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I, bow and arrows used to be hotter, you know. Like there was Legolas, there was this movie. I mean, <laughs> there we go. One, one more, one more, Colin, and I'll be a friend. Rob, like, Robin like, Hood, Prince of Thieves. Robin Hood, perfect. Yes, Prince of Thieves, as well as Men in Tights. <laughs> and what was the one? This just, movie, I think it was just Robin Hood. Was the one with the cartoon? No, Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe. Oh, Crow, the fox. Yeah. Oh, the fox. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Russell Crowe, the fox. <laughs> Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe would appreciate us calling him a fox. Probably. There is still so much. He's more of like a. Oh a my fat god, Wolverine, how is there man? this much movie it's more left? Like a fat Wolverine. Oh my god. We watched this movie seriously like five days ago, and I remember none of this. Yeah, me too. It's because by this point, everyone else has gone on to do the other light things. in the background. Like, <laughs> no, even if you're watching this movie for a podcast, at this point in the movie, an hour and a half in, where there's still like a half an hour to go, everyone is just like, I'm gonna do something else in my life for a while. I can multitask, I'm not gonna miss anything important here. Um, why, why is there real dungeon lit like a music video? Yeah, and it's got the, the light moving back and forth. Do you it's see swinging it? around. Yeah. It's like on a track, rotating around the room. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Just, what yeah, is that? What is the purpose of it? <laughs> it's... I, I can't even... I couldn't even imagine what the... And so the final fight of this movie happens in like an office lobby or something like it's like the worst mm -hmm. location for a final fight with dracula it's no a less. giant yeah giant office lobby. like it reminds me of a uh setting from uh perfect dark the video game this was pr pretty much the coolest part of the movie it was oh, the yeah. concept just pumping colloidal silver in there mm -hmm. to yeah. weaken them Should've why is that not them? used all the time yeah and why does it stop and he burps <laughs> fire yeah which I don't know what the logic was, but I thought that was actually kind of cool. I was like, okay, yeah. that's neat. Um, yeah, there's our there's our rotating light again. I don't understand what the um, yeah. I, it's, it's because the movie is a music video, and this is and this is another moment of trying to throw comedy into something where it's like kind of okay, we're just get to it finally, but it's got to be like Ryan Reynolds. Flash it's a really tropish says, joke, too. Yeah. The it's, character it's, thinks something's going to happen sooner than it does. Yeah, exactly. Hilarious. And he looks silly, and yeah. he's got to wait and stall. And it's like, it's really, it's a hack joke. It, it, it's just, so much of this is just hack work. And it's kind of amazing that, you know, that at no point was anybody like, hey, isn't this a little hacky? Can't we do better? In the uh, behind-the-scenes package, like in the interviews and stuff, uh, Wesley Snipes did not participate because he was like, fuck this movie. Mm -hmm. But uh, David S. Goyer is like all over it and he just seems so happy and proud of this movie <laughs> like well as just, you said this is his this was his best directing effort yeah so. um i'll tell you what else he directed some of the martial arts is still okay you know some of it but it's, it's just like, it's so much more incomprehensible you can't yeah. tell what's going on in most of these shots in comparison yeah. to the first two yeah because this is one of the few times where they're not cross-cutting between one fight and a separate fight we're actually cutting within the fight, so we kind of know more. Like, this is one of the better ones in the movie. And even that, it's, like, still so cutty. It's it's hard to figure out the geography a lot of times. Um, and just the choreography. Is this just shirt. Kind of, this is the shirt. That's no. that's a hippie shirt, too? 
That, it looks I like say she, one thing. <laughs> like it I'll, looks like she's going to. It's a an Ed Matthews Hardy concert. shirt. Yeah, exactly. It's I feel a, like if I live eighty more years, I'll be on my deathbed, and you'll be like, like "So that was the hippie." That shirt, was the hippie huh, shirt, huh? huh? <laughs> yeah. Those leather bell bottoms, I guess. Yes, leather yeah. bell bottoms and that shirt. <laughs> that was this Come was on. very. This was very much what people would wear to like a, a concert or something. Yeah, that's not a vampire murder shirt to me. And a, the no. red bra visible and underneath. This is, this is total hack work. I mean, stolen straight from, from the Matrix. Matrix. Even if the Matrix hadn't made it famous, it's also been used. It also was used in several movies after that. You know the uh, the. You know, come here, gesture with the hand. Look, another, another through glass. Yeah, I think we're on six or seven. People. They just love throwing people through glass. I think I, there's some more. I don't even think we're the done dogs yet. technically oh. go through glass as well, don't they? When we see the yes. dogs. Oh, that yeah. was kind of cool. <laughs> um, okay, so David S. Goyer directed one film before this. Like what a, was it? An indie movie that no one's ever heard of called Zigzag. As a feature. It is a feature. Ah. Is it about zigzagging? It's an hour and 41 minutes Is it about rolling long. papers? From 2002, it says <laughs> an autistic 15-year-old boy steals money from his boss to provide rent for his abusive father who uses the money to repay a loan shark. It stars John Leguizamo, Oliver Platt, Natasha oh. Leone. Oh. Natasha Leone. And Wesley Snipes. What? What the fuck? He, so he, called, he called in a favor then. This came out in 2002. Yeah. Yep. So like, the, the conflict didn't happen until after that, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, they did have a working relationship of some kind. Then he did Blade Trinity. Then he did um, a show called Threshold, which, if I remember correctly, was like a Lost ripoff in the era, briefly after Lost had its like premiere. Everything season. was a mystery show. Yeah, yeah, a sci-fi mystery show. Then he did a movie called The Invisible. Does anyone know this movie? Nope. 2007. Definitely don't. A teenager is left invisible to the living after an attack, and it stars Justin Chatwin. Oh, yeah, that guy. No, I don't know. That's I don't, a, I don't even know who that name is. Name that no one has ever heard. <laughs> he's the guy who plays, uh, he's in the Dragon Ball Z movie. He's like the main. The live action one? Yeah. Oh. There's a live action Dragon Ball Z movie? Yes. Yeah, I terrible? didn't know about that either. It It's it, probably one of the worst movies ever made, which it means it's that probably I'm a good. Excited? <laughs> okay. I, this is when you get to the level of garbage, garbage, yeah. where you're like, I gotta watch it. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Okay, I'll say this. He starred as the boyfriend of the main character in the show Shameless. Did you guys ever watch that show, Shameless? Is that with William H. Macy? Yes. I oh. did, but I don't The girl, remember. I forget her name. Oh, uh, uh, M- Emmy? Emmy, Emmy Rossum. Rossum, yeah. Her boyfriend in season one is played by this guy, and he had for a second, like, this guy could be leading man material. And then he did this movie, The Invisible, and then he also did... Um, and then he was shot out of a cannon. The Dragon Ball Z movie, and <laughs> that was... He, yeah, that guy. Oh, oh that guy. yeah, no, don't. He looks like... I don't um, recognize him at all. I like, do remember him from Shameless. Oh, he's the older him. brother in War of the Worlds, the Tom Cruise. Oh, yeah, oh, he disappears and is never okay. spoken of again. Right, right. He yeah. looks sort of like um, like a pretty boy Jesse from the Breaking Bad a little bit. Yes, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, he's of the same like age. and Breaking Bad? Who in Breaking Bad? Aaron like, Paul. He looks like Aaron Paul, but like more of like a generic pretty boy type. Oh, yes, that yes. Guy. Like yeah. really generic. Sorry, wait, I don't, I don't, I don't need to take shots at this guy. I'm um, sure he's. So hope yeah, you're doing good. Oh, Look at the, the dog. The dogs are jumping through glass when they don't even need. He to. has that two was completely guns. CGI. He has yeah. two guns though. Like what? What is yeah. he doing in this fight? And there's a big fight going on. Like they should be pissed at him for this ridiculous bullshit he's doing. You guys like his cargo pants? No, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the dogs definitely didn't have to jump through that glass though either. No, it, it, you know I've seen dogs chase things. They know when to stop. <laughs> yeah, and the third dog probably would have wised up after the, the other two think, dogs yeah. went through. They did kind of do a good job of, and then he does. showing that the third dog kind of <laughs> slips. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did they do a good job? Of that? It looked like it slipped to me. That's a good note. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give them that. Oh, hey, Dick Phase. I re- oh, I remember clips. this fight being better, and then when we watched it again, it was pretty bland. Yeah, they, there's it, nothing really memorable about this. Uh, I'm talking about the fight between Triple H and Ryan Reynolds. Sorry. They did kind of build it up to be like because they'd gotten into it before. Come and on, it King. Seemed like, yeah, it seemed like they had kind of um, <laughs> go on, King. <laughs> <Right>? Like everything <laughs> is like, come on, King. Well, you put uh, Triple H in a movie, you want to put him in a one-on-one fight with someone at some point. It yeah. should be Blade. You definitely, if, when you put Triple H in a movie, you definitely want to see Ryan Reynolds beat him at wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> That's what everyone's asking for, right? Blade, uh, have you? Dracula's got his armor. Who I am. Because everyone else did. Uh, by the way, I also have a sword, and I'm ready for our sword fight. Yeah, because <laughs> I mean, it's a blade movie, and they all gotta. ended sword fights. You should have went as Dracula for Halloween. Comic. This, Dracula? this Dracula, yes, 
Yeah. <laughs> no one would have understood oh, at all. <laughs> that would have been so good, though. That's what it would have made it brilliant. I actually I'm, think the more obscure your costume I'm Dracula from, from Blade Tr- Tr- uh, Trinity. You guys don't know Dracula from Bro- Blade Trinity? You know, and, like, and, and, and it really shouldn't, but it would straight up make people uncomfortable once you told them. They'd be like, why did you do that? But they, they can't say, why did you do that? But yeah. they would be they thinking, think why it, did you yeah, do that? And they would get uncomfortable. And I could dress up as Jessica Alba from Blade Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica <laughs> Alba? Oh, Jessica that, Biel, sorry. <laughs> that would have made the movie <laughs> A+. Plus. Yeah. You know, it's funny you made that mistake because there's a thing, uh, one of the bits of trivia I read is there's an early like TV spot that came out for this movie where someone fucked up and they wrote <laughs> Jessica Alba instead of Jessica uh, Biel. It was um, just the two Jessicas then. In that promotion big, of this uh, movie. Yeah. Jessica Biel's a B. Jessica Alba is an A. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, got a I whole get what you, about it. I get what you're doing. <laughs> uh, I think Jessica Alba peaked at uh, Idle Hands. Do you guys remember that Oh, movie? yes, that's yeah. fantastic. But is that Dark Angel. Green? Yes. Okay. He has a bottle in his head. Mm-hmm. Um, that reminds me of my uh, concept for a character, a cyborg with a Topo Chico bottle for an eye, Topo Ojo. <laughs> and get this, get this, Topo, no. get this, do, do not steal this. I'm, this is, this is a copyright. <laughs> this is, this is a good character sketch. Um, get this. He has the power to summon the little scene from the bottle where the woman is getting the, the mineral water from the, or I think it's a woman is getting the mineral water directly from the spring. So that, that gives him some sort of like ambiguous, maybe time travel, maybe interdimensional power. And, and we can go from what there. I summon think. the scene. Yeah, I, like, wait a minute. Have I'm you ever seen, seen a this, bottle of Topo Chico? Colin, I would like to retract <laughs> my question and just ignore it and pretend like I understand everything just so we can stop talking about it. I don't know if it's the, <laughs> I don't know if it's the, that it's getting a little stuffy in this apartment and hot or that this movie is still going somehow, <laughs> like, almost two hours after we started it, but everything you're saying is just starting to make sense to me whether it does or not. <laughs> I just think it's a really good idea, and I've gotten uh, mixed reviews on it. Let's just say that. <laughs> mixed. Yeah. Definitely, <laughs> definitely mixed. Um, um, I, I just had a thought, going back to the movie at hand here. Uh, I think one of this movie's biggest mistakes is that they killed off Whistler too early. mm I think it would have been cool if they kept Whistler around and the dynamic of this movie was more like, like they still introduced the, the squad, right? But it becomes like the old way of vampire hunting versus like the new way of doing it. And mm-hmm. they kind of have like a, you know, sort of this back and forth throughout the movie of like who's doing this, who's more efficient at this. And by the end of the movie, they sort of come to a compromise and they decide to like become a team. And that's sort of how you end the series. Just like blade two, they should kill off Whistler in blade three and just have him come back again. He's just there. (laughs) It's like he never died. Exactly. Oh, that one shot where triple H dies and he goes through the, um, whatever, why ever they have that room like greats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) That de- that did look really cool. Uh, yeah, I, I thought think, that was clever. This yeah. this movie has a like three clever moments in it. I also think it's funny how like he's got this samurai sword. The other guy's got his big thing, but they almost are like fencing at one point, like like you would with like a, a like a and light sword, like a rapier or an epee or epee, yeah. yeah, something. It's very weird. Wow, you guys really getting in on the sword <laughs> terminology there. Yeah, I've watched the Olympics. Wow. <laughs> I've seen that scene from... Um, Ooh, more glass jump, shattering. More, more guys yeah. getting jumped through glass. But that think, glass, there's two different kinds. You see the practical glass, the way it yeah, breaks, versus that, the digital glass. Yeah, breaks true. completely differently in this movie. Yeah, like that was real. There, there's another... Yeah, there's a lot of broken glass. I, I think we're at like 10 or 11 now of people... Why is the ceiling made of trash bags? Through. What is this place that they're <laughs> what in? Is what, what is this fucking place? <laughs> there's like bridges and like tunnels. And, and a... a slate floor that's actually very fragile that you can't throw two human bodies off of they're not human they're vampires but does that make them heavier also he seems like does he not in this fight seem like he's more powerful when he's in monster form yeah he should just constantly yeah why does he ever not be in monster form if he's actually stronger that way might have body image issues (laughs) (laughs) that's that's That's, possible that is the only explanation that I don't like the way I look. I don't like scaring you with my face. I like scaring you with my actions. <laughs> also, yeah. he just he just beat Triple H in a fight, and now he's getting his ass kicked by Parker Posey, who we've established in previous scenes is not like a well, super but there's or anything. there was a power dynamic in their previous relationship, and oh. that's yeah. that's come into play psychologically. His red shirt just makes me feel like he's wearing pajamas. 
It makes me feel like he's in an Under Armour commercial. Do you remember the old Under Armour commercials with that one guy who would just like yell at the TV or yell at the camera? <laughs> no, I don't. Oh man, I want to look up the old Under Armour commercial. What did he yell? Vi- Under Armour? I forgot. Th- this uh, <laughs> buy Under Armour. <laughs> this monster form of Dracula also looks a lot like the character design of the devil in Pick of Destiny. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It does. This That's is funny. the shot where she breaks the camera right here. Oh. It's this right there. Boom. Oh, cool. And then they show you if you you can watch it online where they show you like the daily of it, and she wait wait here it is. She reacts. Um. Fantastic. I'm sold. License to Watch, sponsored by Under Armour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Doesn't so, that make you want to protect this house, though? For this ex- apartment, but yeah, I guess. <laughs> oh, look, it's the same shot from so Alien for, Resurrection. For this exciting finale where Dracula dies here, can anyone explain what the fuck this means? Like, because he's infected, now every other vampire absorbs his blood cells that are infected? He's infected with this. It's a virus. Yes. So apparently it's a very fast acting. This is way worse than, you know, COVID. Wait, is it <laughs> nanobots? This is also? all in the air right now. Right. Is it also nanobots? I, I, was I that unclear? Like, I, well, I think they represent the virus attacking blood cells by, you know, these little blue things attacking these little red things that are floating in the air. But no one says nanobites. No. Okay. Because they're, they aren't nanobots. They're okay. definitely just organic, whatever. They're little Got it. magical. Yeah, right. magical things. Got it, got that it. apparently just him exhaling spreads this it's throughout the, it the entire... aerosol, the whole building. Exactly. Is... Well, we don't know. Like, he's got, like, really intense breathing, I guess. <laughs> so maybe that's... that's so the it. social distancing is much further for Dracula. It's for vampires, they've got to be miles away from Dracula <laughs> to properly social distance. But um, I, I was really the impression... You know what? It's the teeth that makes her look very Feruza Balky, um in this thing. Because Feruza Balk has those little fangs um, in real life. Well, they're both they're both great. They're both just absolutely wonderful. Um, uh, fuck, I was going to say something. I forgot. Answer. I don't get that, like, how Jessica Biel shoots him with the arrow and he gets, like, vampire ESP to turn around and catch it. And then he drops it on the ground. And then she shoots him with another one and he's like, eh, I'm just going to let this one hit me. I, I bet they only had one of the bad ones. <laughs> is that is that what happened? I thought, doesn't Blade like stab? No, he, he gets shot in the shoulder first and oh. that distracts him to allow Blade to stab him. Mm. So, yeah. This actor is so bad. Yeah, and I'm how sorry. how is like his uh, virus breath killing and, everyone else, but he's still alive? Right, yeah, because he morphs back into evaporate. human form, which is, we've and said then, over and over, is then the he worst. wanted to kill blade but because he was bested he's like i'm going to pretend when i die yeah. to be you so that you are off the hook with the fbi why, why does he want yeah. to help him at all <laughs> right in well, any way this is because blade has earned his respect and he realizes that blade is truly you are the new the, vampire Yeah, you're the new best vampire you're the new dracula blade <laughs> congratulations it's confusing because it's to me from what i got in the movie the only way to win that guy's respect is to wear leather pants yeah well, Blade was wearing leather pants, wasn't he? No, oh, no he's just wearing slacks in this one. No, yeah. I don't. I don't believe you can put a boner like that. <laughs> that's, that's true. Well, Blade, I believe Blade's boner is powerful enough to even pitch a tent in, le- in the most leathery of leather pants. Oh, it feels like there's rose. there's a lot of missed opportunity in the vampire genre that like a vampire is given a blowjob and just bites the dick and yeah. just gets all the blood. Does that happen in anything else? Probably it's. I think you have to get X rated at that point, or it, it messes with oh, your yeah. ratings, yeah, doesn't it? With you the EPA, need, need to show it. Yeah, I need to see that dick. You need to see the bite marks on the on side the of the dick. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Leather's too tight for Blade's boner. <laughs> oh, what if the vampire lives through it and then they call him Flute or something? <laughs> oh my god, that's gross, Matt. Why did you say that? <laughs> Uh, so we're, yeah, we're, well, we're getting to the end of this movie. Do you think we get to the end of this podcast? I can't wait. <laughs> Guys, right. this is our last episode of the year. What do you think? We're going out with a bang here? We're going out with something. We're going out <laughs> with a, a big old banging turd. It's not a great movie, but 
Um, I'm willing to... Oh, we to, have to rate it. Yeah, we do have to okay. rate it. Okay, let's rate and this thing. What okay. is the system you guys use for rating? One to ten. One to ten, Timothy Dolphins. Timothy Dolphins. Um, I will go first. And I will give Blade Trinity. Trinity? <laughs> Trinity. Trinity. <It's> Tragedy. <laughs> Oh god, this movie's making me loopy. Um, I will give Blade Trinity uh two Timothy Dolphins. Um because it is not a good movie. I don't really we've I think we've made our case on this one. Um we haven't even talked about the music, which was also um awful. I yeah, thought it was pretty, actually a highlight. Pretty bad. Comparatively. They, they do the standard like techno stuff for the fighting, but then they yeah. add a lot of rap music, which wasn't bad. Some of it was actually good, but it's used in the most in the oddest, most inappropriate places. Anyways, so um in conclusion, two Timothy Dolphins. Wow. Pretty low. Yes. Pretty I feel low. like I was being generous. I, I for a movie that I couldn't find one thing to like about when I was watching it. Um, yeah, Don. Uh, I'm fascinated by the police detective guy that looks exactly like the new mayor of New York, by the way, uh, Eric Adams. The black guy that was just there. Um, it's, it's most of this movie is just a B roll that they didn't really have any use for, but they couldn't fill out the time and a bunch of time lapses and some, uh, some actually fantastic glass shattering and people and dogs and animals going through glass. So I'd probably give it three out of 10 total. Wow. Nice. Mainly for all of the, the glass shattering. It gets an extra Timothy Dolphin for glass shattering. Right? <laughs> even, <laughs> well, even in the more. credits when they're recapping things that have happened, they show all the glass shattering again. Yeah, they're just replaying stuff in the credits now. But also, we had that terrible shot of Wesley Snipes on a motorcycle at the end where you see the city in his sunglasses and then he drives. It's just like such bad music video effects. And the city this, in the sunglasses This would be a 2 like out of 10 64. movie for me, but the design of Dracula when he is actually a monster, it looks really cool. Yeah. I mean, that's... Really, all the movie has, though. Yeah, that's worth a dolphin or two. Um, when you guys watched this, did you stick around to the very end for the uh, end credits scene? I don't think we did. What? There is one? There, there is one. It's probably, I'm betting it's the exact same thing that always happens where it's like Blade is now somewhere else in the world ready to continue yeah. the fight. Blade will return in Blade 4. Please the, watch the this. Music so, supervisor is George Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> and Draculius. the RZA did the music. Did you guys yeah, uh, I notice saw that? that? Uh, yeah. Colin, do you want to go? I guess so. I, yeah. Um, well, they so they made a movie. It has a, a beginning, a middle, and an end. I think we we saw that that was true. That's debatable. <laughs> Agreed. Um, oh, oh, stop. Harris is jumping to the end credits. Yeah, I, I actually can't evaluate the movie until I know <laughs> yeah, what's in this. End I may have scene. to change my score. This yeah. is great. It might go Word. up to nine. Word. Um, <laughs> imagine st sitting around in the theater to the end credits and suddenly you're gifted with this. Don, you're missing it. All right, he's driving. He's driving. He's driving his car. Still driving his car. The end. They, that's it. That's they, it. They that literally it? just did not want to not use any B roll. We they might have had seen, another this shot. Might be the only mystery in the or movie in the history of Hollywood that used every piece of B roll that they shot. <laughs> yep. They had this shot of him driving through the city, and they were like, "Yeah, let's end it with this." Yep. That's him driving off into the moonset. Moonset. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. The moonset. Uh, okay, Colin. Now that you've seen the entire. Well, movie, now I've I'm seen the whole movie. It. Uh, I mean, that. how many points was that worth alone? <laughs> it actually loses points. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking I'm in like maybe the three area. I, I kind of want to like bump it up a point just for Parker Posey. But <laughs> and I mean, Triple H, he was fantastic, I guess. Uh, underutilized. What, was, did you enjoy the first or second time he said dick face? <laughs> <laughs> the second time brought it home. I didn't understand that it was a part of his character until the second time he said <laughs> dick face. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's just like, it's, it's not very, I, I don't think I can actually give it a four. That's that, that may be too bold. Natasha Leone was fantastic, I guess. Oh my God. Just say a number. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do three Timothy dolphins for blade. Trinity. Blade Trinity gets three dolphins. 
There's a symmetry there. It is the Trinity, yes. Um, all right, I'll keep it quick. I am right there with you guys. I did not enjoy watching this movie. I had never seen it before. I gave it the best, you know, I gave it the, um, I gave it a fighting chance. I'll say that. And, uh, I was just totally unimpressed. This is the most 2004 movie I've ever seen. Although, and when I, when I say that, it feels like a nineties movie. Like it, it's like kind of the beginning of that decade when like stuff from the nineties is still. Yeah. This, some of the stuff might be dated. At this, but like it felt yeah, very 2004, the time but it, it felt like out. 2004 that maybe they're kind of clueless that maybe what, they're already. What do you mean? This movie has MP3 technology. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the only thing I could say about this is I do remember seeing commercials for this, but like when it was coming out and thinking like, oh, I have to see that. I loved Blade 2. And I, I, I feel like at the time I'd, it's, I know I saw Blade 2 before I saw Blade 1. You contributed to that $132 million. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I might have seen it in theaters as well, but I'm not sure about it. But I, but I didn't end up seeing this, and I remember thinking, like, oh, what a missed opportunity. <laughs> but how wrong I was. This movie sucks, and uh, I'm sorry that this is our closer. But, uh, yeah, I think I'm right there with Harris. I think I have to give this to two Timothy Dolphins. <laughs> it's, it's really an average the two and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Two and a half Timothy <laughs> Dolphins. This, this is what's uh, really taking the blade. drag good old Blade franchises score down a bit. Sorry, Wesley. It's, it's, still just, great. it's just such a shame because Blade One and Two are so yeah. good. Yep. Yep. Yeah. They well, just, they just lost the thread on it. Don, you're here for a very special episode because this is the last episode of a series. We get to announce what our next series is going oh. to be, and it took uh, a long, a lot of thinking. This is a, a Matt choice. Uh, we take turns picking, and uh, you know, I had a lot of series in mind that I thought uh, were in contention, but ultimately, it boiled down. To a classic franchise. We're going for uh, one of the greats here. We're, we're talking the original. Well, there's six films in the original series. And then there's two extra in a, in a like a afterthought. Spinoff. Spinoff series. Yeah. yeah. Um, the series we're talking about, of course. Land Before Time. Yes, no. <laughs> the uh, the sports classic. Rocky. Rocky 1, Rocky 2, Rocky 3, Rocky 4, Rocky 5, and Rocky Balboa, which didn't get a number. Uh, it's Rocky 6. Uh, though. Rocky 2 plus Rocky 5 equals Rocky 7. Adrian's Revenge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Rocky V <laughs> Back with his review of Rocky 5000 <laughs> So Rocky will be our first series in the new year uh, Also the first episode will be our 100th episode uh, So look forward to that one I'm sure it'll be uh, spectacular in many ways And we'll do all sorts of bits and stuff Yeah we'll do fireworks <laughs> Yeah for all to see In, in Matt's living room <laughs> That would be awesome In audio <laughs> Um, but yeah, we've got some good guests lined up already, and uh, you know, it's still, I mean, it's still debatable whether we'll do Creed at the end, or maybe as bonus they movies we'll do or something. bonus episodes, they, they would be good. Yeah, I mean, so here's my pushback with that, is that Creed 3 is like currently being shot right now. So, yeah, so when Creed 3 comes out, then we release those as regular episodes. Ooh, ooh, yeah, I like that marketing head wall. of yours. Exactly, and then we just do a Creed three, and we got a franchise right there. It's less work for us. Wow, brilliant! Wow. You know, it's it's almost like we need um, some sort of like words to live by on this. You know, like we need our to, to have a creed. Oh my God. Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, like the eye of the tiger. That's my creed. I called it. Oh, you yeah, guys okay. have to come up with your own. Heart, sun, fire. <laughs> Strong desire. Um, I pity the fool. <laughs> Pretty good. All good Pain. creeds. All good creeds. Okay. Uh, I must break you. <laughs> if he dies, he, he dies. dies. <laughs> Great movies. We're looking forward to that. Uh, Don Fisco, thank you very much for being our guest. Thank um, you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything much. you want to promote or uh, this talk episode about? Obviously, comes out around Christmas time. I don't know if you have anything that's coming out around. I've uh, got a short film that we're going to be getting into production for in December. The Indiegogo will be being launched in the next couple of days. Uh, if anyone wants to donate money to a short film, we can post that on the uh, the notes. Of, Fantastic for this episode. If you want, nice. um, do you have a, a, an Instagram or Twitter or some kind of social media following? <laughs> Not at all. Excellent. <laughs> that's what you. I like to hear. <laughs> Um, great. Well, awesome. Wait, do you, what's the, do you, are you still, uh, untitled at this point? Uh, working title right now is Bean and the Babysitter. It's the story, uh, set in Midwest, uh, rural Wisconsin. 
uh, where a babysitter gradually realizes the parents are not coming home. Mm. Sounds spooky. Um, Sounds sad. Sad, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, great. Well, that's the end of our show. Do we have any final thoughts on Blade, the series? I mean, I guess we'll do the wrap-up episode. That's really our last episode. Yeah. yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see where they go with Maharasha Ali, uh, the newly announced. <laughs> His name is Mahershala. <laughs> I'm going to say it the way I want to say it because it sounds really good. <laughs> it's it, much debate about the pronunciation. <laughs> I mean, not for him. Mahershala Ali knows how to pronounce, pronounce his name. Maharasha but, is a title. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I mean, I don't know. It's Marvel now, so it probably won't be R-rated. Although, didn't we say we heard it was going to be? Yeah, he's probably not going to say motherfucker nearly enough. Nearly enough. He'll get one time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, everyone gets one. Wait, so it is possible that he in some way could achieve the title of Maharaja. Uh, and then he would be both. As long Maharaja as they, they open up in the yeah. Middle East and the Syria, Iran, you know, same yeah. place. Like, Blade Trinity. Syria, tells us. Iran, whatever. <laughs> I thought that title was more of like a Pakistan, India region mm-hmm, mm-hmm. title. Yep. Well, they're all okay. the same country in, in the Blade universe. So in, within, oh, the, right. within the Blade universe, he could become a Maharaja. Um I was thinking the real life guy. I was thinking Mahershala Ali becomes a Maharaja. I mean, somehow. I think real life often imitates the movies, so maybe it'll happen in the Blade universe first and then carry he, over. He will be taking over Agrabah. Is the Maharaja the one who uh, wears the horn helmet and pulls your heart out over a. No, that I is incorrect. Uh, I, I think, well, I don't know. I don't <laughs> think we want to jump to conclusions. That guy's name is Mala Ram. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh but, but could he be Ma- Maharaja Mala Ram? I don't think so. He works for. Um, he, he's. He's the leader of the Tuggy cult, and he works for a uh, uh, some other royal person. That's much better than the Huggy cult, which is just <laughs> yeah. a bunch of little kids in diapers. It's very cute, but not very effective. But is is a sensible prediction that everyone thinks that Wesley Snipes will be like his mentor Cameo. in the movie? Yeah. I hope they do that. Why not Whistler? He's he's Whistler. He's got the long hair and everything <laughs> straightened. <laughs> Literally, he walks the like the Chris, whole time. It's yeah. me, Whistler, motherfucker. <laughs> He still acts like Blade. Like they, act, <laughs> they can't get him to act different. <laughs> he's wearing he's sunglasses. <laughs> he looks exactly like that, but he's got a wig on. On the, on the set, he insists that everybody <laughs> refer to him as Blade and not Wesley <laughs> Snipes or Whistler. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, we, we know. We know King's going to be back though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go on, King. Go on, King. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the end of our show. Um, Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Um, should we have a blood rave to, to get us out of this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, should one of us be a human at the blood rave? Oh, my God. Mortal cop. <laughs> Happy New Year, you fucks. As always, thank you for listening. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe if you like the show. Thank you very much to our guest, Don Fisco. And as always, thank you to Chris Morocco, a.k.a. C-Rock, for doing the remix of the Blade theme for this series. Do yourself a favor and please join our Patreon by going to patreon.com slash L2W and subscribe now for just $1. Help support the podcast by joining. You get instant access to over 40 different bonus shows that feature us covering non-franchise classics with a new episode every single month. Again, that's www.patreon.com slash L2W. License to Watch is a part of the Fandom Limb Podcast Network, so please be sure to check out some of their awesome shows. And be sure to check out our recap of the Blade series on our upcoming Blade series wrap-up episode coming soon. Very soon.
Thank you.